Hey, everybody. So welcome back to uh, Fist 2.5 and Fisting Java Save the Universe. This starter video is going to be on Section 3 and 4 of the video. Section 3 is all about starting locations and, and actually how to get into the game, configure options and things like that. Um, get your game set up, hopefully, for the best performance. And then Section 3... Uh, the rest of section three is going to be all about the starting locations, and there's even a bonus section in here for you. Um, we do walk around the stations a little bit, and uh, I hope you guys will enjoy that. Uh, section four is all about the Moby Glass and how the Moby Glass works and how you get all that stuff set up and uh, how to interact with it. Very crucial for the game. Um, so without further ado, on to the video. All right, everybody. So here we are. Um, we're in basically chapter three of this video, and we're basically going to talk about starting the game. Um, when you first start up the game, you're going to be at the screen, as we've already uh, talked about. But you're going to have this little red box down here that says to unlock your friends list, select a primary re primary residence in the persistent universe. If you do an account reset, this will also happen. Or if uh, one of the patches goes live that has a database reset, you'll also have this. Um, basically, what happens is you have to pick a place to live. But before we get into that, I want to talk about some of the options in the game. Which you should probably optimize for yourself before you even start playing. So we're going to go ahead and click on options here. And it's going to bring us up into the options tab. Now, there are many, many, many videos about this, and really, this is what your computer can handle. Um, I'm not trying to flex on anyone here, but my, my computer is pretty beefy. Um, I have the latest generation of AMD uh, CPUs. Uh, it's a 5950X, something like that. It's it's pretty beefy um i also have an, an nvidia 3080 ti so and and i play in 4k because my i have a i have a 32 inch 4k monitor that i play on so i've kind of tried to optimize my system for that what's really important is to have at least in my this is my opinion it's not the minimum requirement but my opinion is you need at least 32 gigabytes of ram so with that being said let's go over the game settings i'm not going to spend a lot of time on this but i do want to go over it with you um, some of the options under game settings, you have cinematic cameras, you have vibration, um, showing hints, uh, things like that. I, I turn those off. Um, I don't use a game pad, so I'm not worried about vibration. I keep my cinematic cameras on. I turn off the hints because they, they get annoying to me because I already know what's in them. Um, but if you're a new player, that's probably going to be turned on by default. Um, and once you're done with them, turn them off. I don't use subtitles. Um, or contextual dialogue subtitles, um, things like that. I do keep my ship entry labels turned on. That will tell you when you when you come up to your ship uh, the different places you can uh, enter them. And there's a lot of ships in game, and sometimes you just forget. Uh, <laughs> hey, where the heck is the elevator? Oh, the elevator's over here. So I, I keep I like to keep that on. Um, I my sprint toggle is off. Um, I like to actually hold down the button when I sprint. Um, I mean, you can go through all these yourself. Um, some of the more important ones that I like to talk about towards the end here. Um, all the way towards the bottom. Um, okay. So I do like to keep nameplates on everything. Um, lock my I, I don't like to ping uh, my radar unless I'm actually in scanning mode things like that I, some of these might be turned on by default I, I just don't remember what's turned on by default anymore because I have a custom control scheme layout but one thing here this pilot driver to automatically enable target padlock I keep that as a no my driver look ahead I keep that as a no as well I think that's on as a yes by default 
and turret look ahead I keep as a no, uh, meaning as I'm looking at something, um, same with this pilot look ahead enabled as a no. Let's say I have a target in place. Um, if that is turned on to a yes, then your view in game without your control will automatically shift to that to that look ahead to that where that target is where you targeted something. I don't like that. I, I'd like to target something and move my head as I want to. So that's kind of a big thing for me under the game settings tab. Um, the rest of it, I mostly have stock, but it's up to you to, to choose that under the graphics tab. Here is your gamma, your brightness and your contrast settings. I keep them all even uh, my resolution. Of course, I, like I told you earlier, I play in 4K. Uh, but you can easily change that to a lower resolution if you want to. There's a lot of resolutions the game does support. Um, I played for a really long time um, in even with my 4K monitor, I played in uh, 2K, 1440p. Um, and with when I first got the game, I played in 1920 by 1080, 1080p because that's the monitor I had. And the game still looks great in 1080p on my 4K monitor. The window mode, you have some options here. I believe it comes default with full screen. I recommend going to borderless full screen. And what that allows me to do is I can move my mouse in and out um, of the screen and the game won't minimize. Or you can run it windowed if you want to, if you want to see the, the actual window. Um, the quality now, all my options are set to the highest I can get, right? So my quality is high. Um, Train tessellation, scattered object distance, volumetric clouds is a big one here. This is a big performance impact. If you're running the game, you should probably run it at 1080p uh, minimum. Some people without beefier computers can run it lower. Um, I just don't feel that you get a very great, good experience unless you're at about 1080p. Um, if you start to have frame rate issues, which we'll get into how to do frame rate here in a minute. Um, Try first thing you should do is change your planet volumetric clouds to medium or off. Um, if you still have issues, change your quality to start going down, right? To medium, low, things like that. Um, I do like to turn the motion blur off. I don't like that effect. It messes with my head. I turn the V-Sync off. I do sometimes experience tearing here and there, but it's pretty minor for me, so I can deal with it. I keep the sharpening off and the chromatic aberration all the way off. Um, cause I just, I don't mind those effects and it, it takes away from my FPS and I keep the film grain as off. I do that all, all this offs here on the bottom so I can keep my FPS as high as I can go. When the game is optimized one day, I'll turn some of that stuff back on. Under audio, this is pretty standard here. Uh, I use headphones. Um, uh, you can adjust your volumes. I don't typically play with music. Because when I do a lot of my recordings, I don't want their music interfering with mine. Um, things like that. Um, pretty self-explanatory. I do keep the game audio when the game's in the background. So if I'm in a different window, I can still hear what's going on. Um, controls. So under controls, the very first one here, if you look down in the bottom right corner, it has mouse highlighted. So this is my inversion settings and my sensitivity curves with the mouse. If I move, if I click over, that's the game pad and I can, I can do same type of curves and sensitivity settings. If I go over again, it's joystick one, joystick two, joystick three, joystick four. Um, I believe one of my joysticks, I actually have inverted for some flight characteristics. Um, I don't think it's joystick four. And to be honest with you, I don't know. Like I, I have a host ass, which means I have two, uh, it's hands on stick and stick. So I have two sticks. I, I don't have a throttle. I use another stick to control my throttle. I believe that's under joystick two and well, maybe it's not anyway, whichever one I figured out because <laughs> you have to figure out which one is which, um, it might be under joystick one. Um, I had to invert, uh, those settings because everything was backwards. So you might have to do that in this game as well. Um, under key bindings. So this is like a video all to itself, really. But, um, this is just the setting for keyboard and mouse. And this is just for flight. 
and then you can kind of hover over the keyboard here and see all the different settings. For instance, the N button, November, is for landing mode. M for mic is under mining mode. To go into scanning mode, it's Victor or V. C or Charlie is cruise control. X-ray is space brake. Um, to go straight up, it's the space bar. To go down, it's the control key. There's a lot of keys with keyboard and mouse. And I can tell you guys right now, I probably fly, I don't know, different than every, everybody has kind of a different type of thing. But I mostly fly with keyboard and mouse. Um, I do that because it's easier for me to control. And when I transition into FPS and stuff like that, I, I play with keyboard and mouse anyway. The only time I ever really use my joysticks is when um, I'm doing any type of dog fighting or something like that. That's when I actually go to my sticks because it's much more precise and there's a lot more precision. Um, I just figured out the reason my sticks didn't show up in there is because they're, they're turned off right now. So that's probably why it's not showing up. Um, you also have some of the mouse buttons here. Like if you press down on the middle mouse button, it puts me in missile operator mode. An operator mode is there's and there's going to be many more of them to come is just another think of it as a whole new uh, mode that you're going to be in. Like you have regular flight mode and then when you go into missile operator mode, all the buttons work just in that mode. So, for instance, going into missile operator mode, clicking down the middle mouse button. Now my missiles can light up, but I can't shoot my guns. I can only shoot the missiles. Um, and, but some of the controls in missile operator mode, like increasing the number of missiles fired will only go up when I'm in that mode. And so one of the things uh, CIG is looking for into the future is for in more modes, you know, mining mode, you can still control your flight and stuff, but uh, you can only do certain things in mining mode. Once like, and to do that, you have to hit the mic button or the M button when you're in mining mode and you hit the left mouse button, that's when your mining laser fires. If you hit it again, it turns off. When you hit the right mouse button in mining mode, it goes into the extraction mode where you can take all the ore you mined. Um, and then once you turn off mining mode, then you go back into full flight mode and you can control your ship um, the, the way you normally would again. So more of those are to come. Um, if you want to, you can click on flight and then you can go to on foot and you can see all the buttons for uh, things to do on foot um like i for inventory um you can customize your weapon with j and, and these keys only really work when you're on foot they don't work when you're in the cockpit now some of them do and the one you're going to hit probably the most often is f right f is interaction mode that works pretty much in every mode um and also bringing up your Moby glass, which is F1. You'll be using that a lot. So I don't I don't think you have to memorize all of these. Um, I certainly don't have them all memorized, but uh, it, it's good to know the basics. And, but we're going to get into that as well. Moving on from the keyboard and mouse, we'll go back to flight. We'll switch over to the gamepad and here it has uh, an Xbox game controller up here for flight what all the buttons do, what the modifier buttons do. And then it goes into your joystick. Like I said, I don't have my joysticks connected right now, so nothing shows up for them. So um, if you do want to go and remap your keys, you need to hit the advanced controls customization button on the bottom left. When you're in here again, you have to choose whether you're on keyboard and mouse gamepad or your joystick. And uh, you have different control profiles here. So if you have saved your control profiles before, um, you can reload them up. They might not be current to what some of the, because the game changes all the time. The game might have changed something. <laughs> so you might need to load up your old settings and then uh, fix them and make sure they work with the current patch and then resave them. So as you can see, like I have settings game glass, uh, 313. I have an old settings for 313, 315, 311. These are all patches. December 2021, right? Um, my settings from June and August and uh, 313. So you can see there's a lot of different uh, 
control settings in there for the joystick. And then CIG also has some pre-programmed ones in, like for the VKB Gladiator, um, which is one of the sticks that uh, Jawa is about to get. My old sticks, the Thrustmaster T16000M, um, Cytec X52, X55, X56, Thrustmaster Warthog, stuff like that. Um, you can also like go back to your mouse and keyboard um, and the same control profiles exist, but then you can, you can uh, change what you want. So let's say in quantum travel, oh, that's not a good example <laughs> in flight movement. Um, if I wanted to change roll, roll left instead of Q, I wanted it to be shift Q. I can put that in there. The way you do that is you click down onto it and if on the bottom it'll say double click to change and right click to unbind or use the Y button to set a double tap. So if I double click this and then I hit shift Q, it's going to ask me, hey, this input is already used by the following. Now all these movements are in, are in basically, I don't want to call them operator modes, but they're in different situations than flight. EVA, on foot, on foot, and turret movement. It uses the Q button, basically. And I'm okay with changing that. If you have anything up there that's in the same category you're in, like flight movement, then you're going to lose that. But let's go ahead and say yes for right now. So now when I when I want to roll my ship, ship left, I have to hold down left shift and hit Q at the same time, and it'll roll. Um, if I select it again and I right click, it unbinds that what I just set. If I double click it again, hit Q. Again, I get the same thing for my input. Everything uses that Q button. I'm going to hit yes, and it goes back to the way it was. If you want to save off your control profile, you just click on the control profile, hit save control settings. By the way, you always have the option to clear your settings. Um, right here, clear all device bindings. And you have reset to defaults as well. So if you're going, to, if you want to get back to very basics, you clear your settings, reset them to defaults. And, and you use that for every every setting, your mouse, your keyboard, your gamepad, your controllers. But if I want to save off my current control, which you should, and, uh, you know, when you do a new patch, you bring that back in, hit save control settings, name it, whatever you want. So we'll call this tutorial um, settings, January 2022, BIST 25. I know it's a long name, but you know, kind of tells me what I'm doing. Now, if I go into the control settings, um, I'm not sure if this is going to show up right now. I probably have to load out and load back in, but it would eventually show back up here. Um, and then I could actually go back to those settings. So if you have uh, questions about con uh, controllers, um, Jawa made a video on that of how to do gamepad stuff. Uh, if you have questions about Thrustmaster T16000s or in general joystick stuff with this, I have two videos on that. One is uh, from 312. One is from 313. They're both still applicable. You need to watch both of them, unfortunately, because they change the control schemes. Um, and that will show you kind of how to get into uh, and how to how to mess with your controls, like join a key so you can get like two sticks working and things like that. Next up is comms, FOIP, and head tracking. So you can see up here at the very top, um, it has, it asked me what microphone I have installed. Now, by default, this will just say use operating system default. I made the choice to go in there and change it to my Elgato Wave 3, which is what I'm using to talk to you right now. Um, it is my system default, but I choose it anyway. Now, the whole reason you want to do this is because if you want to talk in the game and because you can have like conversation and local with uh, people you don't know, just walking around a space station or something. Uh, there's a specific button for that for me. Um, and it is the plus key on my number pad. Um, you got to have a microphone. You know, the options have to show that you have a microphone. You do not want your microphone on mute, which is the next uh, thing down. You want your microphone volume to be all the way up to 100. Um your voice over IP audio volume should be all the way up to 100. What you don't want is your uh, level activated voice transmission to yes, because that means every time you talk into the microphone, it's going to pick it up and broadcast it. It's going to get annoying to people. If you're in Discord with other people, um, they're going to hear that, and then they're going to hear you in the game, and it's going to be this weird stereo thing. So 
probably don't do that. Um, and that goes along with the, the, th the voice level on threshold. Now, under that, it starts talking about face wear and things like that. What this is doing is this is how a face over IP works. And we're not going to go into it too de in depth, but uh, when you click on the, the, the camera device that you want to use, it's going to give you a bunch of different options. I actually have three webcams hooked up um, to my system, my Nexigo, my Logitech Brio, um, and there's another one over here that I don't think the game recognizes right now. Oh, the, the HD webcam. That's the other one. What I choose to go with is I go in 1080p, 60 frames a second with my Brio um, because it can actually do 1080p at 60 frames a second. You got to make sure your webcam can cover that. The higher the resolution you can get, the better for FOIP. The really the key is to have 60 frames per second. So it picks up your movements more uh, smoother. I don't want to say more smooth, but smoother. And then uh, then it'll pick up your lips and things like that uh, easier. You also want to have light on your face and you don't want to have anything blocking your face. So if you can get a camera at your face level, that's probably the best bet. If you can't do that, at least have it at the top of your monitor so it's looking down on you at an angle and it picks it up pretty well, although your eyes aren't going to be great. Um, camera rotation. If your camera is rotated and you can choose what its rotation is and it'll it'll recognize that and it'll pick up your your, your lips and your eyes and stuff the correct way. Um, enable this button here, this for enable uh, facial tracking. Do you want it on or do you want it off? I'm keeping it on for now. And then one of the most important things you have to do is you have to calibrate it. And if you want good FOIP, you want to calibrate it right before you use it. You can calibrate it multiple times. You can do this while you're in the game. Um, let me switch over to my main display because otherwise it just picks up the game. When I actually click on calibrate, this little window comes up. And so you can see me talking to you. And notice up in the corner, it says calibrated false is tracking is false. That's because I'm just a little bit right now too far away from my camera. Let me go ahead and turn the lights on. Don't pick up my face yet. Oh, see, it picked up my face as soon as the lights came on. So right now, calibrated is false and is tracking is also false. So I'm going to close that. I'm going to hit calibrate again. Ah, and you just kind of want to move your face around. You see how it's tracking? My eyes up here, my eyebrows, my nose, the bridge of my nose, and my mouth. Now, calibrated is true. Is tracking is true. My FPS down here is roughly 60. Tracking is roughly 60. If we were in game right now, it would be picking me up pretty well as long as I'm looking at the monitor. So that's kind of how a, a real cheap tutorial on FOIP. So I'm going to turn that off, turn my lights off. We'll go back to just the in-game window. There we go. Now, head tracking. This is a whole different thing. I have a Toby head tracker and it I love it, but it does make me dizzy when I have a lot of head tracking on in the game. Uh, it's just a motion sickness thing. Um, I do use it sometimes. And basically what it is, it's a device you can buy made by a company called Toby. And uh, as you move your head around and stuff, it'll move your head around in the game. It's it's pretty good for flying. Um, you do need to, there's a lot of options here to adjust the dead zone and when to have it on. Do you have it on during FPS while you're seated? Um, does it check your offset in the cockpit, which is front and back? Um, if you move your chair back, you'll actually go back. If you look, if you bring your face closer to the Toby, it'll come more forward. Things like that. You notice I have it turned off. You don't have to use a Toby. You can use a track IR for that, or you can use face wear. Um, meaning your FOIP must be turned on, it must be working, and then it'll look to see if you turn your head, and uh, it'll actually turn your head in the game. So that's up to you if you want to use that. See, there's a ton of options in Dead Zones for the tracking, and I just haven't set mine up yet um, for the Toby. I will one day. And so that is about it when it comes to the options. Um, I don't want to get too much in depth with that. But now... Before we go into the game, um, let's talk about this. To unlock your friends list, select a primary residence in the Persistent Universe. You're going to click on Persistent Universe, and then you're going to come up with Character Creation. 
Now, character creation, it's it, it doesn't, I mean, it saves from session to session, but it resets every time you do a database reset or every time there's a patch, every time you do a character reset, things like that. And you can go in here and change it as much as you want. So um, there's not a ton of options right now. So I basically, most of the time, I just go with uh, something simple. Um, for this account, because this is not my main account, this is one of my alternate accounts. Um, this one is uh, a female. And you see faceware is, is wor FOIP is working, although it's not working great because you can see my lips aren't moving that great. Uh, we can actually, let's go back and let's fix that. We'll go back, we'll go to options. We will turn my lights back on, we'll calibrate. Okay, I know you can't see it, I recalibrated. We'll go back into PU, we'll pick our gender, and you can see that my face over IP is actually working. If I raise my eyebrows, it raises. If I move my lips and start talking, uh, it talks in game. If I move my nose and I move my eyes, one eye open, the other eye open, it does all that stuff. So it's a pretty cool tool to use. Although you can see it's not perfect here because it's not exactly at my face level, but it does a pretty good job. So for this character, we will go ahead and um, you're under your first head. You're gonna, It's like a DNA blender. So I'm going to click begin blending. And then I have to pick another head here. And if I want to, let's say I want to be uh, more, I don't know, more of this person, right? If I slide my slider to the right, it'll, it'll blend the DNA in between the two faces to look more like the other, the other model. Let's say I just want a little bit of blending. I can do that with my, with my brow, with my eyes. I can pick different models. So if I wanted this person's eyes, we could do that. You see how the eyes change. Um, usually what I just change is I change my eye color up here and you guys can play around with this as much as you want. Uh, and I usually change my hair, their hairstyles. Let's be honest. They, they kind of suck and they're mostly geared towards guys. Um, but yeah, that's kind of a, anybody can use that one. Um, I use the faux hawk for my main character. Yeah, let's, this is, this is a girl one. You can spin your character around in here. That's a bun. And then you can change the colors to something, I guess, more appropriate. Um, whatever you want. I mean, the sky's the limit here. And then you can go to review, check out your character standing in their underwear, and then you can hit accept. Now, now that you have a, a character that's created, you can go into um, the persistent universe. Now you do have to choose. Um, when you select your system, you have to select Stanton and then you have to select your location. So we're about to go into what I call the Brady Bunch of, um, I guess, uh, location selections. And let's move over to that now. Okay, so we're going to select Lorville as our primary residence. All right, so here we are at Lorville, and we need to actually get up. Um, you can see that it says, my other ship is a bangle, a Murray Cup sticker is in your bed. This is your HAB unit. To get up from your bed, it could be a multitude of keys. Most often, it is just the Y button. Y for Yankee. Let's hit that now. And my character is getting up. Believe it or not, sometimes they get up on the on the left side of the bed, sometimes on the right side of the bed. I, I don't know what determines that. I know in Lorville, it's not a big deal because you have space on either side. But uh, in Arcorp and other places where you're sleeping against the wall, if you get up on the wrong side of the bed, you're going to fall <laughs> and you're going to die. Um, so anyway, um, this is your habitation unit in Lorville. Um, one day these will actually be persistent and it will be your habitation unit, but right now it is not. We're not going to do this whole big tour of Lorville. If you want to see that Jawa made a video on that, but we're going to do a, a brief overview kind of on what's going on in, in your hab, what you can interact with coming up here. Notice how I open that door. Well, there's a key for that. Uh, when you come up to something, you need to interact with it. You're going to hit the F key. 
So if I hit F, I have this little uh, target bullseye type thing, and that will actually, that's your interaction button. And you're going to use that to interact with a bunch of different things. So I don't think I can, yeah, if I wanted to sit on this chair, I hold F and I left click and boom, guess who's sitting in a chair and to get up, just like you get out of bed, you hit the Y button. Sometimes Y does not work to get up. Sometimes you have to hit it a couple times, like twice or three times. Sometimes you hit the space bar and you can get up. I don't know what that bug comes from, but it is supposed to be the Y button. Um, there are things in your hab you cannot interact with, like your microwave that always says 30 seconds on it. Um, you can open up your little uh, uh, beverage container thing that doesn't actually do anything. You can open up your desk. Oh, by the way, I just crouched. When you're in F, you're, you're walking around, first person mode. If you hit the control key, you can crouch. If you hit the space key, you stand up from your crouch. If you want to crawl around on the ground, hit the X key and you will actually go prone. As you can see, I'm prone and the bun is sticking out of the helmet. That's pretty cool. To go into a crouch from here, you hit the control key and then to stand up, it is the space bar. The way I moved between those views. Right now, I'm in first person mode. If I hit F4 one time, that brings me into a close first person mode. If I hit F4 one more time, it brings me into a little bit further away first person mode. Now, as I'm moving the mouse, my character will also spin. If you want to use your free look and basically move around at, at your will, you hold down the Z or Zulu button. And then you can, as long as you're holding it down, you can move your mouse around just like I'm doing now. There you go. And you can do that in any mode to reset your mode, say like you got it stuck on the front. And as I'm turning my character, oh, now, now the view is stuck like that. If you want to reset it, hold down F4 and hit the asterisk key that's on your number pad and it resets your view. Okay, so we know there's things you can interact with, you can sit down on, you can uh, make a cup of coffee, you can do all kinds of different stuff here. Um, by the way, this is like a weapons rack, even though we don't have any weapons on us. Um, to open up a door, you come up to it, you hold down F, and you left click. This is the infamous uh, shower and toilet combination. Um, <laughs> believe it or not, there is a uh, shower head that comes out, and there is a toilet that opens... Um, none of that stuff really works right now, um, but it will be part of future gameplay where you have to have hygiene. So there's your sink, your toothbrush, all that kind of stuff. So pretty cool with that, pretty cool with the animations, and the coffee pot does work, although there used to be a coffee cup in there. Right now it's just going to brew coffee into nothing. Um, used to be able to have a coffee cup there, used to be able to pick it up, drink it, and do whatever, but someone might have... Might have stolen the cup because these rooms are used by not just you. When they are persistent, then it will be just yours. Like the stuff in the closet, none of it is interactable. It's not technically yours. Um, to get out of this front door, you're going to hold F, click open. But before we do that, let's talk real quick about the inventory system. And this is only going to be part of the Loreville tour where we talk about inventory. So we're going to hit the, you want to make sure there's a little bit of space in front of you. Otherwise everything gets distorted. So I'm going to hit the I key and now we're in our inventory. So this character, like I said, it's an alternate account, but she's been around for uh, a little bit. So she does have some stuff built up and I gave her some gifts uh, before. Um, you know, she was at the Intergalactic Girl Space Expo. She has uh, a couple different ships. So she has a little bit of gear, uh, but not a whole lot. So you can see that she's wearing this undersuit. If I highlight it, she has an arc light pistol. Uh, she has her helmet on. Um, there's no armor or anything on her right now. Um, she does have a couple medicine pens. To move your inventory screen around, just basically click and hold the left mouse button to the side. Actually, I'm sorry, the right mouse button to the side, and that will spin your yeah, the, the screen around your character while you're in inventory mode. So let's say I wanted to remove the jumpsuit. I'm going to go to the jumpsuit, or the, I'm sorry, the undersuit, and I'm going to hold down the left mouse button and drag it into the inventory. 
what that's going to do is take everything off your person, including your, your helmet, your med pins, all that stuff, your, the gun, everything. Um, in the local inventory here, which a lot of you probably already know how to use, um, you can hit the filters button and it will filter out. Like, say you just want to look at what undersuits you have. She has two of them. The Rest Society one and the basic one that came with the game. Um, well, so let's go ahead and put the Rest Society one on her right now. Okay, cool. If I want to take that off, just drag that right back into the inventory. You could also come from the inventory and double click and it automatically equips. From uh, the next one, say like armor, I click on the armor button. If you have a lot of gear and a lot of items in there, this will be a screen that you can scroll and scroll and scroll and have a ton of stuff in there. Uh, this is important when you start buying things because there will be a lot of things at different stations. You can hit the custom button here and you can filter out what kind of armor you want to show. So let's say I select, I deselect armor, but I just want to look at helmets. I click on helmets and then I can see all the different helmets I have at my home base here. I know this filter thing is showing above the description, but you can just click custom again. And then now you can see the description. So if I wanted to have the hill horror helmet, I could double click that and put that on and then I can drag it off. It's pretty simple. Um, right now we're going to stick with the default gear. If, uh, if I wanted to go to clothing, you know, there's my jackets, Christmas shirt, things like that. In here is my, what you come with an arc like pistol. Um, I don't have any ammunition utility. I do have one med pin that they give you and I don't have anything else, uh, except for, what apparently is placeholder. <laughs> so I don't, I don't even know what that is. Um, so th they still have a lot of work to do on the inventory. It needs a lot of polish, but there you go. To exit the inventory system, you just hit the I button. Boom, we're out. So the next part here is going to be, um, let's just get off of, let's get out of the hab. So now we're out of the hab. We happen to be on the second floor of unit C6. Um, these are all the same here in the town city of Lorville. Um, sometimes you'll be down there. Sometimes you could be up here. I've been in pretty much every room here. This is when you start to get that. Oh my gosh, look at this game moment. You really do because there's a lot of detail to it. Not a lot of this stuff works, but it looks amazing. You know, you have people sitting around the ambiance here is just incredible. Um, it looks like NPCs are actually doing something. They're not. There's people standing on chairs still. Um, yeah, there's pool table, things like that. None of this stuff works yet. One day it will. Um, arcade games will work, things like that. Uh, you can actually look out. You can see Lorville. It's nighttime out here. Um, we can see the spaceport from here. And if there are people flying around, you can actually see them flying around. Those are real people. These are all NPCs. Um, and this is a guy that sells things like Big Binnies. Um, I don't think he actually sells anything you can buy, though. So anyway, to get out of here, you want to be on the this is just lower real. You, you want to be on the second floor. And here is the big exit sign for the elevator. You're going to call the elevator by holding down F and left clicking call elevator. You can click it a 50 times if you want. It's not going to move any faster. Now, a lot of my friends like to call this the wonk evader because the elevators move through space and time. It looked like a normal elevator right there, but it probably flew diagonally. Um, when you get inside the elevator, this is actually an elevator that moves. You're going to move inside of it. You can pick all the floors you want to go to, but really the floor you want to go to is the ground floor. If you hold down F and you scroll wheel in, you will zoom in on things if you, and then you can scroll out. It works the same way with um, the floors. There is a bar over here you can move or you can scroll your mouse wheel. What we want to do is go to the ground floor. And it says right here, next floor, ground floor. It does take a second, just like uh, a regular elevator does. You can see the lighting changed a little bit already. And here we go. When you exit, I mean, take your time, look around, uh, play, play around with things. But 
Um, and you definitely should. But for right now, a lot of these things that are in game, like the guy who would control if you get a room, this guy, um, they don't actually work right now. One day in the future, they will. But you're basically going to come out here at Lorville and you're going to have your first wow moment. Um, you're going to come over here. You're going to you're going to look and they're going to be dumping toxic waste. Yeah, there we go. Right on schedule out of, out of these tubes, which is why everybody hates Lorville because it's like super polluted and there's a whole lore thing behind it, which you can, again, watch Java's video for. Um, we can see the spaceport is really close to us, and sometimes you can see people flying around up there. But uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to kind of fast forward until we get to the train. Um, so just hang out, and if you want to follow along, you can see on the quickest route to get to the train. If you want to know more about Lorville and how to get around, I, I highly encourage you to watch Java Sparky's video on Lorville. It's in our playlist. Okay, so we are here at the Metro Center. Um, we took the spaceport line because we're going to head to the spaceport. There's three areas at Lorville. There's the, basically the trade district. There's the uh, the common area, which we are in now. And then there's the spaceport. We are going to get on the Maglev train. Um, probably built by Argo Astronautics. Fun fact. And it's going to depart here in two, one... Doors close. And here we go. And we're going to look out the window while we travel here. But uh, one thing to take note of, this is not a loading screen, guys. We are actually in a real train um, in virtual space. And we're actually moving around this, the city of, of Lorville in this train. Um, so it's, you know, it's actually physics based, have, if you will. Um and you can see a lot of the times this is, it's cool to do it at Microtech, which we'll get to uh, well on the Microtech part. But if you have friends and they have party markers um, and they're on the train and you're like flying above, you can see them moving along in the train. All right. And the lady said we are now arriving at Tisa Spaceport. And the exit here is on the left. Be fairly quick about this because those doors will close. And now we're going to make our way over to what's called the ASOP terminal where, where you will retrieve a ship. So let's go ahead and head there. And here we go. So we are here at the, the ASOPS terminals, which are these terminals over here. This is where we will retrieve a vehicle. Um, Lorville is a little different from all the other cities right now, all the other landing areas, because um, it does not have a hospital yet. It should have its hospital in patch 317, which will come out at the end of the first quarter of this year. Um, so I can't really, you know, show you where that's at or anything. It is going to be in the area where we spawned in at. Um, it's just right now the 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 exterior is there, but the interior there's nothing there. Um, here at the spaceport, you can actually take a look at uh, some of the ships they have for sale here. This is an M50, uh, one of the fastest ships in the game. It's a racing ship. You can call your own ship to leave. There's a viewing area, much like other uh, airports out there. Um, there's supposed to be some kind of like VIP chairman's club thing over here um, with armed security. <laughs> um, it's it's currently not actually open. Um, and then back here, you can see it says New Deal and the New Deal is a shipyard. So real, there's only a few stations that have these. Um, but if you go back here there, this is a place where you can buy ships. So Lorville is a place where you can buy a lot of different ships. Over here is a Mustang Beta. There's a Constellation Phoenix, and there is an Aegis Hammerhead. You can actually go in those and take a tour of those. 
Um, over here, another M50, an 85X by Origin. Over here, uh, an Aurora. And then a Misk Prospector, which is the solo mining ship. And you can actually buy it just by clicking on it right here. Um, there is also a kiosk here. There's only one. And at this kiosk, you can actually click it and you can uh, buy the various ships if you have the credits. Uh, this character only has 125,000. Um, so there's nothing in there that uh, she can afford. So we will back out of that. By the way, to, to get out of a, of a screen, once you're in it, just uh, I hit the S button, the backwards button, and boom, I'm out of the screen. If it wasn't already obvious, W, A, S, and T is what moves you forward by default. If I hit the shift button right now, I will sprint. If I hit the left shift button while I'm holding down W. Down in this area is the elevators. Uh, there, I know it says commercial flights. They're, that's not a thing yet. One day it will be. But these various elevators over here, um, they, they will take you to your pads when you call your ship. So to call your ship, you're going to go up to a retrieval console. Enter the console. You can see I have three ships available to me. The MPUV Cargo, the Mustang Alpha, which is uh, the starter ship for this character, and the Aurora ES, which was a promotion um, when I created this character. And you basically, you're going to hit over here. You're going to hit retrieve. And uh, your ship's going to be spawned onto a pad. It's going to tell you where it's going to go. And you, you go take the elevator. So let's go ahead and do that right now. We'll just go ahead and grab uh, the Mustang. Actually, let's grab the Aurora. Grab the Aurora ES. I'm probably not going to go into this much detail at the other stations, um, but this is the first one. So it's at Hangar 6. If you uh, get over here to... Oh, look at all these guys standing in the line. Like I said, this, this game has some bug issues. Um... If you get over to the elevator and you're like, oh, geez, what elevator was it in? Um, or I'm sorry, what hangar was it in or, or what pad was it on? Uh, they put in a new feature last year where you can just you can see your ship and it's right there. So Aurora ES is in hangar six. You just have to look around and find the marker for it. So we'll go down to hangar six. It's actually pretty short to get to the hangars. You can see our ship's coming. Our ship's just going to be to the right of us. And there we go. So we'll come out of the hangar. Now, you don't have infinite time in these hangars, not until there's persistent hangars, which is supposed to be in 317. We'll see if that happens. But in Lorville, you actually leave vertically. So you're going to leave up there. Microtech. It's a different type of hangar, so you're going to leave out the front. Um, some places have pads that you land on, so you're going to be out in space. Make sure you have a undersuit and a helmet on before you actually walk on into space, because there's no air in space and you will die. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get my Aurora. I'm going to enter my ship. And it automatically does that. All I did was hold down F, click enter ship. I'm going to come over to my seat, hold down F, enter pilot seat. This is definitely not a ship review, guys. Now I'm in my pilot seat. Boom. Okay. So that's pretty much Lorville here. Um, we're going to get a, into a little bit more detail with ASOP terminals, um, a little bit of ship controls and things like that um, in section six uh, of this video. So if you want to skip to that, feel free. Uh, if not, we're going to kick back over to the next uh, area where you can wake up in. Uh, these tours from here on will be shorter um, because I'm not going to go over, you know, how to have the basic controls and inventory and things like that. So with that, I will see you at Art Corp Area 18. All right, so here we are waking up at our corp. And we're going to do the, you notice there is a wall to your left and our room to the right. Cats are on board. We're going to hit Y and wake up on the right side of the bed again. So just like in Lorville, uh, our corp has, uh, you have your own little hab here. It is, again, not persistent, but it is different, right? You have your sink over here and a little little cooktop you have your your restroom and things like that where you can freshen up 
et cetera, et cetera. It's, it's a habitation space. Um, it's, it's just a little different here in Arcorp. Arcorp is a planet of cities, kind of like Coruscant with Star Wars. Um, but it is, it is significantly different. It only has two areas uh, you can go in. Unlike most of the other places have, uh, three different areas we can go in and, uh, our corpse pretty cool. Uh, it is very technology driven. Um, and it is ran by a, basically a space bus. So when leaving your hab in our corp, you kind of come upon basically the floor. All right. It's, it's, it's a. It's a tall apartment building is what it is. And as you come down the stairs here, you do have a good view of the city, which it's, it's looks like it's either dusk or sunrise. Um, Arcorp is very, very pretty at night, um, as all are all the cities. But, you know, uh, when you're kind of in a downtown area at night, it's just, I don't know, it's it's, it's kind of different. It's It's really a whole different place. So to get out of here, just like in Lorville, just like at Microtech, just like at Orison, um, you will enter the elevator and go to the ground floor. Once you hit the ground floor, as we will see, um, it'll be a lot like Lorville. You'll come out. Uh, this place is called Adra Falls Apartments. And there will be like a little desk service guy. There's a... Uh, these things, which you're going to see all around the verse, is where you can pick up and drop off packages for basically uh, UPS or FedEx missions. Delivery missions is what they are. And, uh, yeah, there'll be a marker here and stuff for missions, uh, but we'll get into that later. These are specifically, these are Kovalex shipping containers. When you come out of our corp, you're in the open air, and it is oxygen here. You can breathe. Um, you can see there's like traffic flying around. There's you're in the city, right? It feels like you're in a city. Um, you can see how tall this apartment building is. It's really, really tall. But there's a lot of different hidden areas. If you want to know more about our corp in the city, please watch Java's video. But immediately after exiting the apartment building, you have the clothing store, Cassaba. You have your weapons, guns, and ammo over here at Cubby Blast. You have uh, some food places you can go to right here, right at the hot dog stand. And this place even has a shipyard as well called Astro Armada, which we can probably see from... Look at this guy. So you're living on the eggs there, buddy. Look at him standing on the outside. Again, bugs, guys. But this is actually the shipyard. We're not going to go there, but uh, the shipyard is called Astro Armada. Um, if you go into this little area over here, that is... A shipyard where you can buy more ships. Um, there's also one more shipyard at Orison where you can buy some of the Crusader ships. But between Lorville and Arcorp is where you're going to buy pretty much everything. Um, so with that, we're going to do, again, a little fast forward here. Uh, the fastest way to get to the space bus from leaving Adra Falls. And here we go. Before we hit the space bus, just wanted to show you, this is kind of the main intersection area of Arcorp. Here you have uh, Arcorp Plaza in here where there is a another weapons shop and the Million Mile High Club is up there as well. It's the tallest building on the planet, on the, we're actually on the planet because this is the only landing area that's official uh, called Area 18. There's a lot of other areas, Area 11 and 12 and 8 and 19 and 20 and all that. Area 18 is the only one that actually has our corp headquarters here. You have the Trade Development Division over here. If you need to sell goods at a at a develop at a trade division, this is where you would go at our corp. Um, this area down here will take you down to the ship store, and over here, City Flight is where the space bus is and where we are headed. Okay, so we can actually see we got lucky because the space bus is it's really just the bus, right? City flight. Um, it is arrived just as we got here. So good timing on that. Um, one of my favorite parts about our corp is the giant hologram lady right there. 
Um, it's it's just really cool to see her doing that. Um, and it is just a big hologram. What a good indication if your server is kind of messed up is if she is T-posing because um, she does do that. And uh, fun fact, she can be killed. <laughs> there there have been bugs and uh, uh, yeah, she can die. Uh, and so can uh, the the holograms over at uh, New Babbage at uh, Microtech. But we're taking the space bus here, uh, get a good view of some of the cool buildings around here. And hopefully one day um, there will be more of them that we can enter and, and stuff like that. You can land on most of these with your ship. But if you get too low, um, it will pull you out. Um, you can't hang out with the traffic and stuff. So now we're going into the like a traditional bus lane type area. And this is some of the traffic um, going through. These are all, you know, just NPCs and they're just generated. Um, you cannot actually there. There have been I have actually flown down here with with some bugs, but you're not supposed to be able to fly down here and interact with the bus or anything. Um, <laughs> but it was pretty cool when I was able to. So you can see we're going to have a left exit of the space bus here. All right. And here we are at Riker Spaceport, which is what Riker Memorial, which is what it's called at Area 18. Um, we're going to go through this customs area, which you have to go through everywhere. By the way, these machines right here, they are for fines and citations. They're all over uh, the different landing areas. Um, if you log into them, you have to click in. You, if there was actually some fines or something like that, like if I had a crime stat one or something like that, you can actually pay that off. It gets pretty expensive, but you can pay that off and uh, be free and clear. Um, anything that's like a major crime that's considered a felony, like homicide, uh, you can't just pay that off. You actually either have to hack your crime stat away or you have to serve time in prison. One day, if you ever have, you won't be able to carry weapons in here one day. You'll be able to check your weapons and pick them up as you leave. But uh, if you do go through here with weapons, uh, armed security will probably shoot you. Um, there's more customs and stuff here. I can't wait till that comes in the game. More fine citation system. Um, and here, here you go. One thing we didn't touch on at Lorville is that at most of the land, the major landing areas, there are rental places. I believe at Lorville it's called Vantage Rentals. This one's called Traveler. Um, if you do want to try out a ship and you don't want to necessarily pay for it real money or you just want to see if you like it, rent it. Rent it for two days, three days, eight days, whatever, whatever, however long it'll let you. So if let's say I wanted to rent a Drake Dragonfly, it would cost me... 5,454 Alpha UEC, which is the money in the game, for one day. I can rent it for three days, which it goes up in price. Um, that's 14 grand. Um, seven days or even three. I can rent it for a full month. Uh, it would cost me 102,000, but I'd have access to it for a full month. Um, if you wanted to rent something a little bit bigger, which I'm trying to find here. Um, not a whole lot of big ships. A Constellation's a pretty good sized ship. Um, so like a 30 day rental for that would be a little over a million credits. So, um, just keep that stuff in mind. Uh, there is rentals out there and yes, you can rent a prospector and mine with it and make money. Um, this is where you would call one side of the ASOP terminals where you can call your ship. It's the same thing on the back. And then over here is the actual spaceport area with the observation deck and the some elevators over there. And then there are some more elevators and hangar elevators to the hangars over there. And then this oh, eventually, once we have commercial flights, you'll be able to board them over there. So with that, uh, that is the Art Corp starting area. I think next we are going to head out to Microtech. We'll see you there. All right, folks, so here we are at Microtech. 
In the bed, we can look out. Again, we have a, a bed right next to a wall with a window. And then we can look around and see our hab out here. We're going to hit Y and hop out of our bed. Now, Microtech in, in the city of New Babbage, Microtech is the planet, is the second newest city in Star Citizen. I believe it came out in 3.9. And that is the actual city out there. Um, if we, if there was people flying around, we would actually see it out the window. Uh, so pretty cool amount of tech. Again, this is a, a hab, and this is one of the more technological cities in the game. Um, I think of this city as Planet Apple. Um, <laughs> that's just because kind of what it reminds me of. Very heavily focused on tech. Um, Microtech is. Microtech is the name of a corporation, the same as Hurston, Arcorp, and Crusader. So this hab is a little bit different. Um, it's a little more, I guess, upscale, refined. It's very nice. I imagine once you have to pay for these, these will be a little more expensive, but it does, you know, it is just a hab. I will let you explore that on your own. Um, you'll see a lot of these uh, three feathers up here, and that uh, basically signifies that you're in the Nest Department building. The, I believe it's the tallest building at uh, the city of New Babbage. So we exit the door the same way we would all the other cities, except it's a little more mood, a little more ambiance here. Uh, we do have a viewing platform out here, and you see there's that train I was talking about earlier right there. And uh, if that had uh, actual real people on it, there's another one coming by. Um, we They would actually be in it traveling, just like uh, we'll be doing here soon. So I do, <coughs> I, I like Microtech at night, but I really like it in the day as well. It is a snow planet. There was a whole lore thing with the accident and terraforming, and it's just cool. It's, it's covered in snow and stuff, and there's a special thing about Microtech. We'll see as we get a little bit lower down. We're on the 10th floor. We're going to call for our elevator and, and head down just like all of the the other habs and apartment areas. Um, this one does not have a roof or anything. Orison does have a roof. So Microtech and Orison will look very similar because the art assets are, are very, very similar. Uh, they're just different colors, different kind of ambiance going on. So as we move around the, the lobby of the Nest Apartments, we come into this kind of hub area. Uh, this has recently changed. Um, I did not show the hospital side at Art Corp um, because it is brand new and it's not my favorite hospital. My favorite hospital in the game right now is Brentworth Care Center, which is at Microtech here. So... One of the new things to come out last year in PAX 3.15 was basically medical and things to do with medical. Um, to me, this looks exactly like what a hospital would look like down to the, the speckled floors, you know, um, almost like tiles. Um, I just want a real brief overview of things you can do at the medical centers here. First off, the information and security, I mean, that, that's just for ambiance right now. It doesn't really work. If you did have an injury, you would come here. Um, you would click on the kiosk, and it would assign you a room. Um, so welcome. Please proceed to floor five, room nine. This hospital is so big that it actually has floors for the hospital. So I would... Um, I would actually hit the elevator, go to floor five, go to room nine, and I would be able to receive medical care if I had an injury. Um, there's different blocks, kind of like different wards at, at different places. And uh, it, it's a, it's actually a quite a large hospital. A couple other things at the hospitals is the, the pharmacies that exist. Now, the pharmacies exist even at the smaller clinics. Um, and the, the things you can buy there are pretty much the same. Um, you can buy all the different types of medical pens. The red one here, the med pen, is the one that actually uh, heals you with health. And then there's an oxygen pen. Those, those are the legacy pens. Uh, if, you, if you need oxygen, that's what you would use. If you need health, this is what you would use. Some of these other pens contain other drugs that can help you deal with other injuries. Uh, they still need some work on the medical system, but uh, it is... It is coming along. Um, you can buy 
I know it says personal weapons, but this is a medical device. And this is basically a, a like a healing gun that you could put. Uh, it comes with and you can refill it with a uh, called a paramed. And it's full of all those different drugs. And you can shoot yourself or shoot other people up and heal them. So that's what you can do at the pharmacy. And then at all clinics and all hospitals, there is an insurance uh, area. And this is how the game handles basically when you die, you come back. Right now, I am based out of uh, Lorville, which right now is the only major landing area that doesn't have a hospital um, until 317. So if I die, I will actually come back at Everest Harbor, which is the orbital space station above um, above Hurston and, and above Lorville. But here at Microtech, I can actually, because they have a hospital here, I can regenerate here at Brentworth Care Center. Um, to do that, I would have to transfer my imprint over to this care center. So it, it asks you, your current regen location is the Kelto Clinic, which is at Everest Harbor. I could change it to Brentworth here by hitting transfer imprints. And then if I die, I would, I'm going to go ahead and do it. I will confirm. I will transfer it. If something happens and I blow up or I die or something, I will resurrect here. Um, and you can do that at every uh, facility that has an insurance uh, type of kiosk, which right now all the clinics have one at the, at the rest stops and all the major hospitals have one as well. So we're going to do once again, a, a kind of a fast forward through uh, Microtech here. We're going to go down to the elevators. We're going to um, just get through the area. Uh, if you want a tour of the, of new Babbage, please check out Java's video. Um, he does a lot more comprehensive tour of the city of new Babbage. Well, that was really fast, right? So uh, this uh, Microtech New Babbage has three different places you can go. Right now, we're at the apartments. You could go to the commons, and in the commons, you can do things like buy clothing, and you can go to the bar, and you can buy food and things like that. That's not what we're headed for today. We are headed for the spaceport, and that train just took off. So we're, we're going to head to New Babbage and Stellar Spaceport. I encourage you to definitely go to all the different landing areas and explore them and see what they have to offer. Um, these maglev trains uh, here at Microtech actually go really fast. Um, and there's there's even maps and stuff like that of, of the whole area out here where the Expo Center was and all that stuff. So we're going to hop on this train. Um, it's pretty cool that it's like an all glass capsule. And once we take off, we're going to head through the very long track that it takes to get to uh, the actual spaceport. When you're flying around Microtech, you can see that there's a there's a big gap here. You can see that right now. The the space station, the spaceport is uh, in front of us with the with the red lights and stuff. And as we go by, we can see the city of New Babbage. And it is a rather large city. That big white building is where we just were, the Nest Department buildings. And yes, you can land on top of it. Might even have a box delivery mission up there. As you can tell, we are actually going incredibly fast. This is faster than most ships go um, in the game. And for good reason. You, you know, you don't want to stay on the train forever. So I think that the CIG planned really well for travel around uh, some of the newer places like Microtech and Orison, because um, the travel time in a city is is kind of wasted time. It's really beautiful, but you can show beauty quickly as as far as I'm concerned. Okay, so we'll hop off the train, and it's confusing, but you want to head to the sign that says exit. So we'll head towards the exit. We'll go through the security scanners and we're up to another elevator. So this elevator right here will take you up to the uh, New Babbage International Spaceport or MBIS. Um, 
to the terminal and we'll have to go through customs and everything. You just saw something like fly through me. That was the elevator. As I told you earlier, they are wonk evaders. Um, they go diagonal, they go out into space and things like that. Um, they become basically invisible um, when they're traveling. So that's why you don't see them. But here we're at the, we're actually at the terminal. Um, we'll walk through it real quickly. Microtech, just like anybody else, has armed security, different uniforms. Um, they have the customs gate here, the fine citation systems. And then you hear the voice of, 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 uh, Microtech, Miss Babbage. And as we come over here to the observation deck, you can see that there's particles flying around. Well, that's snow, guys, <laughs> as you can tell. Uh, it looks like we're up on a sunset here. Um, and yeah, that's that's particles, that's weather. And those, those clouds out here at Microtech, it's the only planet right now in the game that actually has real clouds. So yes, those clouds, those are those are real. They're not 2D images like some of the other ones. They're actually real. You can fly through them, and it adds just an incredible amount of immersion having the real clouds and the and them being 3D. Uh, and Hurston and Arcorp and and all the other moons, um, they're just kind of a 2D layer. They look real, but then once you pass through that 2D layer, um, there's the no more cloud cover. Uh, but these are actually volumetric generated clouds and uh the only other place that has it is the the gas dwarf uh crusader which we're going to head to next and uh the city of orison the the floating city in the clouds and uh that's all cloud tech that whole planet so looking forward to seeing more clouds on like uh, loreville and arcorp and and some moons uh in in the year of 2022 So as we head up to the rest of the spaceport area, you can see there's there's there is no uh, place where you can buy ships here. There's no shipyard, but there is uh, ship rentals over here. Um, that is uh, an NPC doing a T pose. So this server might be on its last leg. Um, there's this is uh, this is actually Pico the penguin over here, and you can buy those plushies, and they stay persistent. If you leave it in your ship, log out, come back, it'll still be in your ship. And then you can buy food and drinks over there. Um, there is actually, there's the hologram I was talking about. That is uh, Miss Babbage over here. Um, her name is, uh, in real life, her name is Anna. Uh, I think it's Demetrio. And uh, she plays Star Citizen as well. Uh, and up here, is there is a surface entrance uh, where you can pull out some vehicles and things like that. Um, and drive around Microtech on the ice lake and load them up into ships and things like that. Um, yes, of a vehicle in a ship. You can definitely do that. Uh, commercial flights not available yet. But then over here is the ASOP terminals to call our ship. So there we go, guys. There, There's a little quick tour of Microtech here and some cool stuff with this brand new cloud tech that just came in um, not too long ago. And uh, it's uh, it just reminds me of home because I'm from Colorado and it's just beautiful out there with all the with all the snow. Cold, but beautiful. Next up, we have the city in the clouds, Orison, at the, the a lot of people call it the gas giant. Really, it's a gas dwarf uh, of a planet called Crusader. Um, it is a floating city in the clouds, and we're going to head there right now. All right, so here we are at our final major landing zone which is the city of Orison, the city in the clouds um, that is basically actually in the clouds. You see these are floating platforms um, in the atmosphere of the gas dwarf crusader. Um, this is the newest city in Star Citizen and uh, therefore, it is actually the prettiest, um, in my opinion, in daytime or nighttime. Um, lots of stuff going on. If you do spawn in here, um, it does take a while to load in. There's a ton of entities and things that it has to load around you. So even if you have a really fast hard drive, fast computer, be patient. 
So as you can see, we are in the hab here. We do have a window just to the outside of us, and you can tell right away that these uh, this hab is very much like Microtech. Um, as I mentioned, they share a lot of the same textures. Green Circle Habs here has a lot more wood and stuff like that, and a lot more lighting effects. This one hab in this area really pushes uh, my computer to its limit sometimes. Um, but the habitation focus uh, works just like the other ones. There's there's stuff to do in here. There's a, a shower and a toilet and a sink and a, you know, weapons locker and stuff like that. Um, which hopefully uh, once this thing is optimized a little bit, um, this will be much more a home. It does have some really neat uh, effects like those lights and stuff. Those are just gorgeous. Um, the rings around the plants, things like that. So let's take a step out here and we will uh, admire Orson. It, it's a little bit different. It is actually a terraformed atmosphere. So it is a breathable oxygen atmosphere up at this uh, elevation, which is about 80,000 meters or so from uh, the, the planet's core from what I know, or at least the, uh, that's what the altimeter tells us when we try to take off. A lot of people do not, um, come here to Orson because it is so computer heavy, computer taxing, and it takes a really, really long time to come in and land here at Orison. And it takes an extremely long time to also leave Orison, um, before you can quantum jump away because, the atmosphere. It's very thick. Um, but as you can see, it's a ton of uh, what I only can assume is AstroTurf. Um, lots of cherry blossom trees, all these interconnecting platforms, uh, some basic lore. This used to be a military owned uh, orbital facility above Crusader. And then uh, it got bought by the Crusader Corporation, uh, which is also a ship maker in the game. And so now they run uh, all these. So we, yes, we can, and we can fall off here and plummet to our death. Um, but yeah, we can walk around the outside here on the, the open air deck. Uh, it just, I mean, look at the beauty of this place. It is, it is gorgeous. There is a statue of a space whale kind of hard to see from here. Oh, there's, there's the shuttle and, and it is a, uh, another type of space bus. But down there is a statue of the, I think it's called the storm wall. It's uh, basically a space whale that is going to live in the atmosphere of Crusader here. There's a ton of stuff, ton of sculpture and things like that. Very, very artistic and a very beautiful uh, landing zone, landing area. And even in the, uh, the just the hangout space inside the habitation is very pretty. One of the things that... This landing area does offer, we're on floor 12, I'm sorry, floor 9 of the apartments, um, is it does offer roof access to the 18th floor. We'll go ahead and hit that up right now. And it's just a really neat spot to kind of um, check out Orison. You should, you should definitely visit it if you're in this area. You can see all the, uh, the cherry blossoms and the... <laughs> all the leaves that seem to infinitely fall away and get swept up with the wind and the trees never seem to really deplete. Um, the flags waving in the air. Um, some of the, there's move. there's, there's actually platforms here that actually move like these guys up here. They, they're actually flying. As you can see, it is actually moving across the screen. That's all pre-programmed in. And towards the bottom there is our, our gas giant, or I'm sorry, our gas dwarf. And uh, the different platforms have different things. This landing area has um, three different areas where you could be at. Uh, I am at the one with the Habs, and there's, uh, there's some shops and things like that in here. There's a place called Providence Platform where there is a shipyard um, where you can buy Crusader ships. And uh, there's also a customization shop where you can buy uh components for your ships over there uh, called cousin crows it's it's going to be where you can do a lot of custom work in the future and uh 
Then there is the actual spaceport itself called August Dunlow Spaceport, and that is named after the founder of uh, Crusader, the company. So we'll go ahead and head down to the lobby. And there we go. Uh, kind of a cool little rock piece out there. And there's, you know, people work. It looks, it looks very much like a hotel when you're in this. There's even a little restaurant and things like that. We'll go out the main entrance instead of the side entrances. And uh, we can see that there's, there's, there's just a lot going on. There's a lot of info stops. There's tour stops. Uh, there's that sculpture and that space whale. And I highly encourage you to visit here. Uh, it is just breathtakingly beautiful um cig did a masterful job at creating this area i just wish it ran a little smoother and faster um because it i mean it, it it even kills the frame rate on my computer we're probably gonna miss that shuttle to the spaceport yeah we did that's okay there's there's these banners out here it tells you where the the shuttles are gonna go that one's august on the spaceport there is another one across the way over there that goes to Providence Platform. This thing over here is actually the hospital. There's a hospital over here uh, at Orison. It was, I believe, the first hospital made and, and in the game. Um, uh, but I think Microtech came with it or like right next to it. Yep, we're going to go ahead and enter the shuttle. And you can see in front of us the Crusader showroom. Um, so Crusader showroom might be here at this at this area instead of Providence platform. But that's okay. I mean, go go ahead and explore. If you do want a more uh, thorough and detailed uh, tour of the Orison area, again, <laughs> I have to reiterate, Java does a lot of travel videos uh, for Star Citizen and. And he did an excellent one for Orison. So you should definitely go check that out if you want to learn more about the lore and the history and kind of how to get around and different things about this amazing city in the clouds. And yes, folks, those that pink and the whites, those are those are volumetric clouds, just like at uh, Microtech. As you can see, we just went through some of them. Um, there's a lot of them, so that's part of what takes the toll on the CPU is that I have uh, lots of detail in that cloud tech um, that I choose to see. All right, so our space shuttle is now pulling up to the terminal here. Well, I guess to the to the area where we have to go to the elevator. It's very similar to Microtech um, in the mechanical function i want to say of of how to do things and there we go so we're up here at the uh we're going to head to the elevator area to actually go to the asop terminals oh, i like it how people wear different clothing in different places as well same faces, different clothes. So we'll choose to go to the spaceport. Now, Crusader is a little bit unique in that uh, the orbital platform that exists above Orison, uh, which is called Port Olisar, is different than the rest of the orbital platforms. Um, We'll, we'll, I'll explain a little bit more about that here in just a second as we go through customs. You see all the little cherry blossoms and the trees and the decorations. Just absolutely beautiful. There is a rental kiosk here, so you can rent ships here as well. Lots of open air. This place is as beautiful in the day as it is at night. It's really two different places. And there's, of course, your store and stuff at the airport spaceport where you can buy goods. Um, they actually have... Uh, like actual video and stuff going on right now. Um, you're going to see more of those in the ads. We have food places around here. And then, of course, our ASAP, our ASAP terminals uh, at the spaceport where we can call our ship and take off. 
But before we do that, I did want to go over the the I guess the uh the orbital stations. Uh there's uh four planets in the Stanton system. And each one of them has its own orbital platform that exists directly above the major landing zone for that planet. For her planet Hurston, that a station is called Everest Harbor. Uh, Everest Harbor is uh, very, very pretty. It's <laughs> it's it's a lot of people go there because it is a centralized location. Um, you can get to a lot of the other places in a shorter amount of time if you leave from Hurston. The second orbital platform is called Bigini Point. Um, it is exists above Area 18 and Arc Corp. Um, I I call that the donut station because it looks like there's a big donut hole, you know, like a a hole inside of the donut. Um, a lot of a lot of the stations are the, are like that, but Bigini Point kind of has a unique look to it. The third one is called Port Tressler, and that exists above Microtech, and it's it's very similar to Bigini Point, um, but it's it's just a little bit different, um, and it's built, you know, just to exist above Microtech there. And then the last one is Port Olisar, which we just talked about, which exists above the Orison landing area. And Port Olisar was one of the very first assets that was put into Star Citizen, I think, back in Patch 3.0, and we're on 3.16. So Port Alsar is a lot of the older art, the older tech, um, proof of concept type of stuff. And the devs have told us that it will get updated um, at some point to look like the other stations. Even though I love its appeal and its charm and the way it works right now with all the pads out there, um, it's very fast. A lot of people make it their home because you can wake up, go down, there's a weapon store, there's an armor store. There's a food store, there's a clothing store, there's a ship component store. You can call your ship, it spawns on a pad, you hop in, you're out. You don't have to wait for hangers to open, you don't have to clear atmosphere, you're in space. So Port All Star is typically my home uh, in most of my characters. However, there is one landing zone we did forget. And it is in the Crusader system. And it's pretty cool. It's not for most people in that... Most people, I find, are actually lawful when they obey the law. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a place that was not necessarily made for pirates, but it is sort of outside the scope of the law. And that is a place called Grim Hex. And as a bonus landing area, we're going to go visit that now. All right, everybody. So here we are. We are at um, a place called Grim Hex. <laughs> this is the. Let's just say it's unmonitored space. It's not necessarily a pirate haven in the Stanton system, but it is a place where there. Yes, there is an armistice, as you can see in the very top right of the screen, but there it, we're not in monitored space here. What that means is that if you have a crime stat, this is a safe haven for you. You can actually be here. Um, Grim Hex is a station that is at a landing zone. I would consider it a major landing zone. Um, it is in the Crusader system in an asteroid that is in the rings of one of the moons of Crusader called Yella. And we'll get into the map here uh, in just a little bit, but I want to show you around Grim Hex just a little bit. Um, it, it used to be a mining type of station. You can see there's not, not a whole lot of amenities here at your habitation area in Grim Hex. There's a place for clothing. There is a, uh, a chair, I guess. <laughs> place you could eat there's not i don't even see a restroom in here um yeah so anyway uh let's go ahead and and leave we're not gonna do a full tour here you can look at jawa's video if you want a full tour 
you can see there's like beds on the outside here, a lot of like water and stuff on the ground, a bunch of trash piled up. It's it's a little more nasty than Lorville. But it's also abandoned. Um, they're really uh, the there's people that run Grim Hack Grim Hacks, but it's not Green Imperial uh, housing exchange anymore, uh, which is where you get the the Grim Hex part is Green Imperial housing exchange. It was a place for miners to live uh, while they were mining the asteroid belt around Yella. So as we come out, we immediately see graffiti. I think it's actually pretty darn cool looking. These used to be like lockers and stuff like that. Um, almost everything on the second floor here is uh, habitation. Um, with the exception of these yellow uh, arrows there um, that do lead us to a ship component store, uh, basically a dumpers depot. Uh, coming around uh, the side here, Grimhex, it's kind of host to some illicit activities. Yes, you can pay your, your fines and stuff off here, too. It is connected to that network. Um, on the sides here, Grimhex, I guess in this area, this is a racing platform. People have races in the asteroids around Grim Hex, and uh, this got put in uh, in 2020, this this area here, but it never evolved past that. Uh, CIG just kind of stopped doing anything on racing at the moment. Um, but this is an area where you could bet on races and watch them and enjoy and like you can buy beer here at these <laughs> yes you can buy alcohol in the game you can drink it you can't get drunk you can buy food here you can buy regular i think regular drinks um anyway that's neither here nor there explore that at your own leisure on the other side of this is a, there's an armor and a weapon store in here called scooters or scudders, however it's pronounced. Um, you can buy hacking chips to hack a crime stat here. There's all kinds of little places around Grim Hex. There, there's even an admin office in here. You can sell certain goods. There's a no questions asked terminal, so you could actually sell drugs and illicit goods. Down there in this area is where you can buy your hacking chips. Um, you could hack uh, com relays and turn them off. You can I try to hack your crime stat. There's actually a, a rather decent clothing store around here. It's the only place that has like jackets, like duster jackets and some of these uh, Tuvik outerwear things. Uh, they, <laughs> they have some some interesting shirts and things like that um, around here. So Grim Hex is definitely a different, different kind of aesthetic. But the reason I call Grim Hex a major landing area and I'm here taking the elevator with this person. How's it going there? Morningstar armor with the purple eyes. I call this a major landing area because not only does it have a full set of Aesop terminals over here, Grimhex has a full medical facility here as well. Now, would I want to go to medical here? I don't necessarily think so because it's pretty nasty it's kind of grimy and gritty and yeah but th there is <laughs> there is a pharmacy there's an imprint area for the insurance over there um yeah it's it's just not not a place i would necessarily choose to go um and yeah anyway uh th that's grim hex for you uh Plenty to explore around here. I don't want to give away all the secrets while doing the starter video. Uh, but yeah, this guy even looks like a pirate, right? Oh, don't look at me like that, dude. Okay. So, and then we can head back to the Aesop terminals here and call our ship. So there you go, guys. That is the kind of the bonus landing area, Grim Hacks, uh, in addition to all the other uh, major uh, orbital platforms uh, around. Um, 
So real quickly, I wanted to do a tour of the orbital stations that are above the major landing areas, uh, which will be the planets in the game. The first one we're going to talk about is the orbital platform that is in orbit above Lorville on planet Hurston, and that is Everest Harbor. Uh, Everest Harbor is a really good place to set your spawn point at. Uh, you can re you can recall your ships uh, that you have on the planets up at the orbital platforms, and it's much, much easier to get into space that way instead of climbing through the atmosphere. That really plays in part when we get to Crusader because it takes so long to get in and out of atmosphere. So this is Everest Harbor. The next orbital platform we'll talk about is, I call it Big GD Point. Um, it is the orbital platform that is above the planet Arc Corp in orbit with Area 18. It's a pretty cool one. It's got the crazy donut looking thing in the middle, which kind of gives it a very unique look. Um, and Big GD Point actually has quite a few good supplies as compared to the other stations. Um, so it's definitely one to check out. The next station is uh, Port Tressler, which is in orbit above New Babbage on planet Microtech. Um, I come here a lot because uh, I usually set a spawn point at Microtech because it is still close to one-stop shopping. Port Tressler, however, is not. It doesn't have very good supplies up there, um, but it does have an armor shop, unlike some of the other platforms. And uh, here you go, guys. Port Tressler. And last but not least, we have my favorite orbital landing uh, platform, which is called Port Olisar. It has been my home for a long time. Um, before Orison was actually a city in the game, um, Planet Crusader, all it really had was Port Olisar. And it was the site of some epic PvP battles, uh, even some PvE battles, and really was your gateway to the Crusader system and all the missions that were there. Um, it is the oldest asset in the game. Um, well, maybe not in the game, but in, in a general term. And it is still one of my favorite stations to go to. It has not been upgraded to the modern station tech like Everest, Bigini Point, and Port Tressler. Um, it has four different struts. It has actually really good shops, really good amenities. Um, but it doesn't have things like hangars and things like that. But it's one of my favorite places in the game. It is all pads and... I love it, and I will be sad when it transforms into a new station. Um, long live Port Olisar. All right, guys, so something I wanted to touch on here is, yeah, there's all these cool landing areas and rest and relax stations and things like that, but what if you just need to log off? <laughs> like you have something more pressing in the real world or... You know, or you're in the middle of doing something and you just you need to hop off. Well, some ships have it, some ships don't. Um, but the ship we're in, which is the RSI Aurora, one of the starter ships. Yes, we're in the deep black of space out here. Um, space to my left, space to my right, space forward. But what's cool about this and this ship and a lot of the ships in the game is that they actually have living areas. And this Aurora actually happens to have one, which means I can lie down inside the ship. And I can actually log off in the ship. So to do that, uh, now that I'm in the bed in the ship, I hit F and I need to find out I don't know where it is in this particular ship. It'll say, yeah, there you go. Get up and log out. So instead of hitting get up to go fly my ship some more, I got to log out and I will do that. And the game will log me out. And then when I spawn in again, if one next time I come in the game with that account, I will actually be uh, in the ship and I will, <laughs> I will spawn right where I left off. I should have everything that I had uh, when I logged off and then I can just hop in the pilot seat and keep on flying. So there's a, uh, that's what happens when you log out of the ship and uh, onto the next piece. All right, everybody. So as you re just remember, we did just log out on our ship and I went ahead and um, this is actually the next day of filming this video. And I went ahead and logged back into the game uh 
right back into the ship. And it was actually quite a bit faster than loading onto a planet because there's less entities to load. So I'm going to look down. As you can see, we are still on the RSI Aurora uh, in our vampire type <laughs> type of coffin, basically. Um, and there should be a couple different ways to get out of here. First way would be just like we logged out. We, we find out we can put get up. Um, but I'm going to try the Y button. And that does work. We are going to scoot out. Oh, and look at that. We, we actually ran into a bug um, with our ship. So as you notice, we clipped through our ship and <laughs> things like this do happen, guys. Um, they do happen from time to time. Um, but easily, I mean, we weren't moving or anything, so it's not a big deal. If the ship was moving, it would have just kept on going without us. But we are able to re-enter the ship. I don't want to hide the bugs uh, as part of this uh, this tutorial. This game has a lot of things still left to do, but it does a lot of things really well. So instead of hitting Y this time, we'll go ahead and look up, and we'll actually hit the Get Up button. And that'll, that'll put us right out of the ship again. So I guess right now, getting up animation in the RSI Aurora uh, is a little hit and miss, uh, at least with uh, the female model. So, but so case in point, just make sure you're not moving, which you shouldn't be after you go to sleep. But we are back in our ship. And let's say something happened. And um, I want to touch on another point of regeneration here. Say our ship did leave without us and we're stranded in the middle of nowhere. Well, we could call for someone to come get us and we'll get into that when we do the the Moby Glass review and, and, and the functions of all those tabs. But uh, let's say you're on your deathbed, you're going to die in five minutes or something like that and uh, you need to regenerate. Well, there is a couple different ways that... You could go back. Um, it doesn't matter where we're at in the verse, whether we're in the Stanton system or one of the other 99 systems that is being planned for the game. Um, wherever your imprint was last imprinted, for us, that was at Microtech. That is where you're going to regenerate. So um, there's, there's another way you can regenerate um, in a different place. And, and I guess we'll go over it real quick. I, I don't want to delve too deep in it because I think it's still very new. But they in the game, there is three different tiers of medical care that you can get. The tier one version of medical care is for the most severe. Those facilities must be like major medical facilities on planets and landing areas like new Babbage, like Orison, um, like, um, uh, one Lor Lorville in the next patch area 18. Those can treat the most severe injuries and, um, uh, some injuries require that regeneration does not, but it's, you know, for the most severe tier one injuries, that's where you have to go to get them healed. That doesn't mean you can't walk around with a tier one injury. It just means to get them healed. That's where you have to go for a, a tier two injury. Um, you will, uh, have to get it healed on a tier two medical bed, which exists on, uh, obviously all the tier ones can heal tier two injuries, a tier one being the best, um, tier two injuries can be healed at tier two beds on things like the anvil Carrick, and other ships, uh, may, like bigger ships that have a large medical bay, like the 890 Jump and the Anvil Carrick. Um, then there is the Tier 3 injuries, which are like fairly superficial. <laughs> if you get drugged up with drugs or, you know, maybe it's just healing a single bullet wound or something like that. Whatever the Tier 3 injury is, that can be healed on a triage level bed. And that would be in something like the Drake Cutlass Red, which is kind of our space ambulance right now. Um, possibly the Apollo medevac and and things like that right now in the game uh, every outpost uh, well, not outpost every space outpost every L Lagrange point station uh, and the major orbital platforms above each planet um, they all have uh, medical facilities um, 
those are they're mostly they're kind of on the clinic level because they're smaller um, but they do have regeneration capabilities okay so i just kind of want to show you guys what regeneration looks like and so there there is a way to go straight to regeneration and that is uh to off yourself in the game just as the context of the game got to be careful on social media and youtube platforms about talking about uh self-inflicted death um but this is a video game context and to do that you just hold down the backspace key and that will induce that action and we're going to see what happens with now i have the ship that's lost in space and i'm regenerating somewhere let's go ahead and do that it says you're incapacitated and, I, and it, it went further than that where i actually died in the game so the last place I imprinted was not at Port Tressler. <laughs> the last place I imprinted was actually at um, Microtech. These black screens, when you regenerate, they are notoriously not accurate. Okay. So you guys can see I am at a medical bed. Welcome back. You had us a little worried there. Your systems reacted well to the treatment. You may experience some slight vertigo, but you have been cleared to leave. Oh, very nice. That's new. Guys, that's the first time I've ever seen that. Um, Brentworth M uh, Care Center, we were here earlier. We're actually in our room right now. Um, recovery and regeneration fees have been covered by the UEE. As a courtesy, a flight suit and helmet have been placed in your local storage. Uh, probable cause of death, fatal impact, or suicide. And so you can click continue. And then if you do need medical treatment when you're laying down on one of these beds, uh, you can manage your imprint records here. Uh, and then you have like medical care. There's no injuries detected, but if there was, it would kind of tell me where it was there. So with that, to get up from this bag, just like any other bag, you would hit Y. I'm not quite sure why my character is not in a, a medical gown, as she should be. But this is pretty cool having the... Uh, the doctors here and you can see that is a screen that you can use at, at some point as well and the assistant carrying a cup of nothing so it sounds like there's a there's another person going through the same thing so usually when i'm in the room here i will um hit i for inventory usually wearing a medical gown that i will just discard on the ground but uh for now I plan to just wear the undersuit if I can. Again, this is new. Uh, so obviously, you don't want to die a whole lot. And so here you can see all the different floors of the hospital here at New Babbage. We'll come back to the inventory. And yes, I mean, it's, it's not realistic but you can run around the hospital in your skivvies <laughs> it's the future uh our our giant walk invader came out and you can see this this is big enough to fit a gurney we're gonna go to the lobby we were on the top floor floor five we're gonna take this elevator ride down just kind of want to show you guys what regeneration is like here. Hey, we're back here. We, we've been here before. Um, the different blocks, our pharmacy, and all that kind of stuff. Here's someone who recently also passed away. And uh, that's their medical gown on the ground. So I'm having some kind of bug where I can't actually put on my um, my provided suit here. Um, it's just not it's not let her put it on her body. And it's probably because it hasn't spawned in the medical gown that I should be wearing. Um, which which. You know, a lot of this stuff is still in work. Um, typically, when you have a box here, you can. Uh, you can equip it, but it's not going to let me do it. All right, everybody. So I wasn't able to get that suit on. Um, so but we are going to try to do something uh, while we still have the chance to do it. Um, 
And if that means I die again while trying, that's okay. It's an it's all an effort to show you how things work. I'm uh, about to exit here and go recall the ship and show you how to do that. But you can see down here, I have a marker for my corpse where we uh, had an, our unfortunate demise earlier. Um, and you can see it's 43 million kilometers away, which is actually how far the sun is from from the planet of uh, Microtech. That is a bug. Um, I was not that far away from Microtech. I was at one of the orbital markers. So I'd probably be in the a couple thousand kilometers away, um, not millions of kilometers away. Um, and we also don't have a marker for our ship, which is rather unfortunate. But because Microtech has a oxygen-based atmosphere, um, and the fact that we launch out of uh, hangars and not pads, there is really no risk to uh, getting in uh, our ship and flying away. So if you do lose your ship, whether it be you got blown up or it's still out there and floating about, um, you could try to go find it or you can basically do what we're going to do here and we're going to claim the ship and show you what that looks like. Um, remember, the only ship we actually had at Microtech uh, that we've been flying around in for this tutorial is the Aurora ES. So as we make it up to the ASOP terminal, you're going to see that the our MPUV and the Mustang Alpha are still at Lorville. If we want to call them over to Microtech, we can, but we have to go through what's called the claim process. Now, our Aurora ES is unknown, but I actually know it's over at an orbital marker um, just outside Microtech, but it's not here at Microtech. So it's it's information and everything is unknown. We need to call that ship back. So we're actually going to hit claim. Now, the claim time on the ship is only 30 seconds. So it's a very, very, very small wait time for bigger ships. It's much longer. It could be hours. Um, We'll go ahead and file the claim and we could just wait the 30 seconds or we could pay as you see this money going down 200 Alpha UBC and it's instantly delivered to us. We can then go back and now our ship is a ready. A brand new ship is ready to retrieve. That doesn't necessarily mean our old ship went away. So we're going to make our way to hangar four. And we're going to go try to find, see, see if we can get near the old ship and uh, recover our body and possibly recover the gear that I had on that body. That's really what the important thing is in uh, this patch and first quarter uh, 316 is to try to recover the gear that you lost. Some gear cannot be replaced um, without an account reset. Uh, that, that includes subscriber gear. Um, and like any any type of rare gear that you may have gotten as loot. So just as before, we're going to enter our ship. And this time you're actually going to get to, to see us take off here. Um, I'm not going to go over that. I'll go over how to do all that in the section that it uh, matters. Um, well, we'll actually go over the keys and all that stuff. But uh, we're, we're going to call for a launch here. And uh, it's actually nighttime out here at New Babbage. Just give you a taste of kind of what some of this is like. And we'll go ahead and speed some of this up until we can find our ship, if we can find our ship. And we'll go from there, so stay tuned. All right, 
So as you guys might have seen that, I just quantumed to the OM marker that I knew I uh, was at when we uh, demonstrated regeneration. And my corpse no longer is at the center of the sun, and we actually found our ship as well. So if you don't know that information of where you were, you're probably going to have a hard time finding that stuff. So just to shine some light on the ship, there it is. There's the docking hatch. Now, the hard part about this is going to be to enter my old ship with my new ship and uh, not die in the process there because there's a bug and I'm not able to use my spacesuit. So I won't be able to breathe. So trying to get in as close as I can here. Uh, hatch to hatch, and we should be okay. As you can see, I am in the driver's seat without uh, in a spacesuit on. So, go ahead and exit that seat. Get a cool view of that animation. Okay, there we are in the ship. And I'm going to give it one last try to put on uh, the spacesuit. Actually, the. Oh, you saw there for a second there was a bug where there was a there's an oxygen leak in there. <laughs> so we'll see if we can we can even do this. It's gonna be very close. So there's the other ship. We're gonna just, we're just gonna hit the enter ship animation. I did lose oxygen there, but we are successfully in the original ship and there is the corpse of, of my dead body. <laughs> uh, we could try to loot it, but there's actually nothing in there. Um, what I do have in here uh, is uh, I, I put all my equipment inside the, whoop, inside the storage of my ship before passing on and uh, it doesn't like me using, there we go. So. I still, I still can't equip my old suit, of course. So there's some kind of bug with that, everybody. Um, but no matter, uh, we have our old gear and we're going to move on uh, to the next part of the video, which we're going to talk about the map. And let's get into that right now. All right, everybody. So I want to go over uh, the, how the star map currently works in the game. It's, it's, it's actually going through an overhaul right now, so it might be different in the future. I want to show you what it looks like in the game. And then I want to show you what it looks like on the star map on the RSI website. And we'll talk a little bit about the future and that's going to wrap up section three of the starter video. So if you hit F2 on your, on your, uh, keyboard, it, brings up your Moby glass, but it actually brings up the star map. It goes directly into the map and we can see this is the stance and system here with the star at the center. The closest planet to the Stanton system is planet Hurston. Um, that's why Joe and I pretty much call it the most centrally located planet. Um, there's the second planet in uh, Stanton is Crusader. The third planet is ArcCorp, and the fourth planet is Microtech. Now, to use the star map here, um, when you're zoomed all the way out, you can see this asteroid belt here in between Crusader, I'm, I'm sorry, Hurston and uh, ArcCorp. And this is called the Aaron Halo. Now, right now, you can go in there, and there are a ton of asteroids in there. Um, in the future, it might be a little more restrictive to get there. You might have to go through some kind of gates. Um, but it is 3D space. You could always go up and then go around. Who knows how that's going to work? But you can see all these other things over here. You can see where it says Her L4, Crew L5, Arc L3, Her L3. These are called uh, Lagrange points. And I'm not going to get into too scientific of a definition for you. But basically, um, after the creation of these planets... And this exists in real life today. Earth has Lagrange points. 
it, think of it as a, a point in space where there are leftover materials um, in the form of asteroids that are actually in perfect balance with the gravity between the sun and the planet and realistically all the other planets as well. You can, you'll notice that in this star map right now, there, there are no orbiting mechanics like these. There is a day night cycle because the planets actually spin. But as of right now, these planets do not orbit the sun. So there's not necessarily any seasons right now. Um, that would overly complicate quantum travel. I think they need to implement it eventually because um, it just adds to the immersion and the realism. But right now, these planets are in a fixed location in space. They just turn on their own axis. So these Lagrange points, the, the cool thing about them and the way they have them set up in game is that gravity is balanced. So the rocks that are there, the, the giant asteroids that are around there, they don't move. And so it's a good place to build a space station because you're not going to really have anything run into you unless it's acted on uh, by an outside force. So for instance, let's go into the Hurston system or the Hurston planetary system. And to do that, you just kind of put your mouse over uh, Hurston and double click on the planet. That's one way to do that. You could also double right mouse click and you'll zoom all the way out again in the map. And now if I hover my mouse, I know you can't see my mouse, but if I hover it over Hurston and I just use the scroll wheel uh, on my mouse, I will end up zooming in. It messes up the air and halo. You can see the asteroids kind of go everywhere as I do that. That should be fixed on a future update, but I can zoom in and you can see that Hurston's L1 and L2 Lagrange points are fairly close to Hurston. Um, if we go over to Crusader, same thing. The crew L1 is fairly close to Crusader. Notice there is no crew L2, right? As I zoom out, there's just a crew L1. Um, with our corp, there's an L1 and L2. Um, there's an L4 over here. There's an L3. There's an L5. Microtech only has an L1. Crusader has an L1, an L4, an L5. Uh, there's an L3 over here as well. Person has uh, one, two, three, four, five. So I hope I hope this makes sense. So what what they do in the game is sometimes you need to get gas, <laughs> and to do that, let's say you want to go from Hurston to Crusader, but you don't have enough. Uh, fuel tanks in your ship to make it there or you have a stealth uh, drive which um, only has a limited range well you could start out at Hurston um, and then you could make it to say her L5 then you can make it from L her L5 to crew L4 and, and you're getting gas along the way and then from crew L4 you can make it to crew L1 get gas and then you can make it to Crusader now that's a lot of stops for gas, but usually it's on the, the smaller drives that are really fast. So, you know, you get, there, there's a whole time management issue that I don't want to get into right now. When we take a look at these L1s and L2s, um, you can actually click on them and you can see in the top right, uh, the, the, the blue area changed to say her L1. It tells you how far away from it we are. We are 30,000 kilometers. If I click on her L2, we are 33 million, sorry, 33 million kilometers. And we can actually zoom in on these areas and we can see that um, in her L1, there is a station called Green Glade Station. I know it's, you can't really see it. And even, oh, there we go. If we zoom in enough with our mouse wheel, we can just see the station. And that's, that's exactly what it looks like. Now we can zoom out and let's say we do this, um, We'll go to Arc Corp and we'll go to Arc L1. Well, there's uh, Arc L1 is Wide Forest Station. So I can set points to this um, and we can actually set our waypoints to this. And we'll get into that with once we uh, talk about the flight mechanics and how quantum travel works. But when you're in the uh, another thing, when you're in the base map here, if you hold, click and hold down your left mouse button and spin, you could spin the map in basically 3D space and tilt it all around. If you hold down your right mouse button, 
you'll move it in 2D space, up, down, left, right. So um, let's say I want to get to Crusader where we're at. We're at Grim Hex right now. And we, like, we're over here at yellow. We can tell by the, the green triangle. And we can double click on yellow, and it takes us to the yellow area. Now here at yellow, you can see, hey, there's all kinds of different things on the moon of yellow. There's a place called Afterlife, NT99... 999XX, Nakamura Valley Aid Shelter, um, Connors, Caso Basin Aid Shelter. There's all kinds of different things. You can even pretty much see, eh, if you get close to it, you can see the rings. Sometimes you can see the rings around Yella. Uh, but we know we're over here at Grim Hex. If we double click that, see the map isn't great, but we can move it in and out of 3D space and we can kind of get a gist of where we're at. So this is Grim Hex. It's in that asteroid cluster, and we know we're over there. You can see the comma rays and, and all kinds of different things out here. We can zoom out with our mouse wheel. We can go over here to Damar. Damar has a bunch of different areas here. We can click this and we can we can plot a waypoint, um, and the system will uh, basically plot how far how where we need to go to get there. Um, same thing when you go to now Crusader is a gas giant. There's the only thing there is really Orison and uh, directly above it is Port Olisar. But if we go to a different kind of planet, um, let's say we go to Hurston, we double click on that. It brings us to their system and you can see that Hurston has four moons, Ariel, Aberdeen, Magda, and Eda. Um, and we zoom in on Hurston here. You can see Hurston has a bunch of different areas and outposts all over the planet. Like, um, mining station, Hurston Dynamics Mining Station, Pinewood, uh, Hurston Dynamics Security Facility, Kofax. If you, some places when you go there, they're not meant for you to go there, and you will get a, a crime stack just by going there. Um, a pretty famous one here is on Aberdeen. It's where the prison is in game. It's called the Klesher Rehabilitation Facility. Uh, it's very close with Barton Flats Aid Shelter uh, for a reason. Because uh, you, you can try to escape prison. But uh, here's where you, you can plot a point to get to Klesher. So the map is pretty darn interactive. Um, as it is, it's it's had some tweaks to it in the last year to make it a little more usable. Um, but here it is. And when we get into the mining section, you'll hear Java probably talk about all the different places where there's refineries. The rule of thumb for refineries is... Any of the L1 points, which every planet has one, has a refinery. And then her L2 also has a refinery. So that's a good frame of reference. So now we're going to switch over to the actual star map on the RSI website. So when you're on the RSI website, if you go up to apps and you click on star map, it's going to take you to this pretty fancy arc star map. I really like this. It's one of the cool things on the website. It's going to load the interface um, and you can see there's all kinds of different areas here. It starts out in Seoul where we're at, you know, in real life, right? And you can double click that and you can zoom in on it. And there's our star. There's Earth, Mercury, Venus. Yes, Earth is actually in the Star Citizen universe. We can zoom out of Seoul um, and you can see all the other systems that are kind of part of the game. This is as far as we can zoom out. As we look around, this is in 3D space. So you can see the systems are all over in 3D space. The plan is for this game is to have 100 systems. Um, all the systems in red are controlled by the Van Duel, uh, which in Squadron 42 is the uh, antagonist. And everything in white is controlled by the UEE. Um, and then I think stuff in yellow is controlled by uh, more than one uh, government. Um, but with that being said, there's all kinds of stuff you can do. But look what we found over here. We found Stanton, where Star Citizen exists. So if we double click in Stanton, now we have a little bit actually more detailed view of what's going on here. Uh, we can see that there's uh, there's a couple jump points in this system. There's actually more than a couple. But uh, jump points are not online yet. Um, hopefully, 
one day here this year, they will be. We can see that the asteroid belt is the air and halo. Um, I did not mean to click out of that. Um, we could look at information. If we hit control disc, we can look at information of the star, um, things like that. We can uh, also look at the moons and planets of uh, the Stanton system. Like here's Art Corp. And then here's uh, one of the moons. And here is another of the moons. This is Lyria. And we can get information on it. Um, icy moon features active cryo geysers and cryo volcanoes. If we do the same thing on Art Corp. And we look up our information. It'll tell us the landing zone is Area 18. It's habitable. Um, its affiliation is the UEE. It's a type of super Earth. So you can get a lot of information here on this map. Um, what I have heard the plan might be is to make the map in game a lot closer to the actual star map here. Um, so I think Turbulent Studios is working on that. And that will be a pretty cool uh addition to the game so if we go back into stanton and the first net or the next place to come online is supposed to be pyro here so if there there's the jump point to pyro and if we want to take it we can click it and we'll go through time and space here and now we're here at pyro and pyro is a much 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 larger system than stanton um and it has its own jump points and its own planets. And um, you got Ruin Station, which is the only real station out there. And uh, the center of this dying star. And uh, you could still, it has its own asteroid cluster and get information on its planets and things like that. So cool resource. Make sure to try to use that. Um, and that wraps up section three of basically the where you start out the next section is going to be on the moby glass and all the different stuff you can do on the moby glass so stay tuned with that and we'll be right back all right ladies and gentlemen welcome to section four probably the smallest section of this entire video although i'll i probably have uh, a penchant to make it <laughs> longer um, if you've made it this far, or skipped this far, we are at the section about the Moby Glass, the most, probably the most valuable item that you have on your person in the game. Um, the Moby Glass is a forearm mounted electronic device capable of projecting a holographic interface and render an augmented reality interface through any augmented reality display such as like a contact lens, glasses, visors, or screens. The Moby Glass was developed by Microtech, uh, which we have in the Stanton system, right? Microtech. Um, and the Moby Glass is, is used in a wide range of fields in both civilian and military applications. Think of it as uh, the smartphones we have today, um, but I mean the phone, not the Apple Watch, but the phone. And all the functions that can do, but in an augmented reality fashion that kind of uses holographic images to, uh, and you'll be able to touch it and manipulate things, right? Um, pretty much everybody in the verse has a Moby Glass. It's not against the law not to have one, but pretty close. It is just a, a tool that you almost can't live without. Um, so when we come up in the game here, we're sitting down at a bench at a Grim Hex and to there are some shortcut keys for your Moby Glass, um, but there's really only four keys you need to know about. The first key is the one you're probably going to use a lot. I said in the beginning of the video, you use two keys in the game, probably more than anything. The first one is the F key. That's the interaction key. The second key is F1 on your keyboard. And that will bring up your Moby Glass at the first screen. So let's go ahead and hit that now. And you can actually see on the very bottom of the screen the, the little two little white emitters projecting our Moby Glass. And we have kind of a blurred background here. What we can see with our Moby Glass is we can see at the very, basically the home screen, 
which in in the screen uh, in the mobile glass itself is in the very middle. It's got all it's got six little squares there. That's going to tell us our personal details. It's going to tell us our call sign and our name. Uh, those may be two different things one day. Uh, it, it'll tell us our current bank balance. For inter- for instance, this character has 120,000 Alpha UBC. It'll tell us if we have a crime stat. But it, it should only tell you that if you're in monitored space. It monitors your vital signs. So uh, this character has a heart rate of 58 to 60 beats per minute. It'll tell you the atmosphere. Um, I don't know if, if this is really super accurate. Um but if you know, uh, a- on Earth, we live at an atmospheric pressure of one with a nitrogen-oxygen mix in the air, um, which Remax has. Uh, right now, I've never seen vehicle status or tracked emission status ever come up with anything. Um, so maybe in the future, that'll be something. Um, and then your your suit status with your oxygen and your tank, your EBA fuel, et cetera, et cetera. How much time you have left if you are wearing a mask. Um, <clears throat> on the very bottom of the screen, all those squares here, Comlink, Vehicle Loadup Manager, Knickknack, Skyline, Moby Trader, Contracts Manager, Vehicle Maintenance, Journal, and Delphi, those are all the applications that are available for the Moby Glass currently. Uh, to the right, it also it'll give you a display at all times of your your O2 um, in your suit, your tank, your EBA fuel, your power, and your bank balance. So you can always get those. Um, so let's talk about the first button, um, which is our com link. So let's go ahead and click on that. When the com link comes up. Uh, it puts you in the global chat channel. So after all, this is a game and there are people playing the game. And so if you want to chat, you can actually chat in here. I like to turn my chat off. Um, th- that kind of comes up on the screen. Um, and if I want if I want that on, I'll turn it back on. But you could also look at chat in here. Um, what this will tell you is on top of the screen that there are 39 out of 40 active members. Um, we are, uh, connected to the audio channel, but it's kind of weird for the global chat. There's really no audio for global chats. Um, on the right side of the screen, it tells us the, me- if we go to members, these are all the members that are on the server with me. Um, I don't know the see Zirki here. He's talking and I don't really know anybody here. <laughs> I've seen a couple names that I've seen before, but not really. I don't know most of these people. Um, if you go over to manage, you can connect to the audio channel, which doesn't actually really do anything. We could turn it off, turn it back on. In global, it really doesn't work. Uh, the channel settings, you can change the colors around. You can choose whether to send things to your visor chat. Um, you can up and uh, lower and raise the volume of your microphone and of your sound. On the left side of the screen, under channels, you can actually add your own custom channel. You can invite people to use your own custom channel. Then you can actually talk to audio. Um, You can also click friends and look at your friends list. Up here, there's green Imperial landing services. So I would actually communicate with this to open a hangar door if I was trying to leave Grim Hex right now and I was in my ship. Um, I could try to open a, a comm channel global. This is fairly new. I've never tried to do that. And then I have this character has two friends, one happy cat and Joe Sparky. And if they were in game, I could actually click on them and I could open up a, a conversation where it would actually show the FOIP for both of us. Whether our mouths are moving or not, it would kind of show an image of me and an image of of them. And we, we could actually have a conversation in the game uh, like if you're not using Discord or something. And then under pending, if you have a friend request or someone's trying to invite you to a party or something like that, it, it'll show up under pending. So it's your basic communication panel. Now, the second button is the vehicle loadout manager. This one is probably going to change in the future. But for right now, um, it will, sh- it will show your ships that you have wherever you are at. 
So for instance, I have three ships. I have an MPUV, I have a Mustang Alpha, and I have an Aurora ES with this character. If I hit select ship, the only one that shows up is the RSI Aurora ES because it's the only one that's at my location at Grim Hex. So it's the only one I should be able to modify. The other ones are over in Lorville. And while I do think we should be able to choose modifications of ships that are over there and then maybe pick them up later, that kind of tech is not in the game yet. When you do select your ship, and we'll get into this a lot more when we start talking about loadouts and customization of ships and, and ships in general. That's going to be a very long section coming up. Uh, but that is section six of this video. But in here, we could, if we had extra parts and things, we could move things around. We could swap components between ships if they're in the same location. You could change the paint scheme. You can change the weapons around. You can see that this ship <clears throat> has some ballistic weapons, but you see there's, there's a... Uh, Weapons on the left and right wing that are completely empty. If I were to add a weapon to that side, it would actually show up here in this 3D model. And then it gives you some information on the weapon down below. And then if you want, you can save your changes and equip it to your ship. So that is what the basic function of the vehicle manager, uh, vehicle loadout manager does. The next button is the knickknacks button. And this is actually new. Um, once we got the proper, uh, I guess we should say persistent inventory, um, where you had to have s your ships and your gear and stuff at the location with you to be able to use them, uh, we needed to know where to find them because <laughs> you might not remember where some of your gear is at. And that's still actually a problem, even with this uh, knickknacks app. It used to be called, the app used to be called the personal uh, personal equipment manager or something like that. Um, but now you can see we've been to these four planets as part of this video. Um, but let's say we'll go to Hurston because I know we have stuff at Hurston, right? We'll go ahead and click open. We've been to Lorville. We'll click open. And you can see at Lorville, I have a couple different paints for my Aurora. For, for the caterpillar, even though I don't have a caterpillar. And it's 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 a paint can, right? So it's supposed to be paint. Um, I have my sweater and I have a, so, some other clothing items here. And then instead of being able to scroll, which I don't like, you have to hit the next button. And then it uh, loads up some more stuff. And some stuff just says placeholder right now. But then it does actually get to my ships. It'll show my ships in here. And there's my Argo Cargo. You can sort some of the things that it shows you here in all categories. You can sort it by what you want to see. So if I just want to see vehicles, it's just going to show me my ships, the Argo Cargo and the Mustang Alpha. Um, you, you can even sort subcategories. Um, if I just wanted to see what kind of paints I had, boom, there's all the paints I have. Even though I don't have some of these ships. I used to with this character. So that's kind of how that works. It, notice there is no back button. So if you want to go back, you actually have to click on Hurston or Stanton. So if I click on Hurston, I'll go back to the Lorville menu because it could have all the moons and stuff in there. Click on Stanton, then I can get to other areas like Microtech, New Babbage. Notice I don't have anything at New Babbage. Uh, for paints, I would have to actually go back. I could hit click the X. Oh, I do have a Beacon Undersuit and a Horizon Helmet because if you remember, we uh, hit the backspace key. So that is kind of how knickknacks functions. The next button, actually, I'm going to go ahead and turn the movie glass off because the next one is the skyline, and that is the map. The next shortcut key that you, you will use probably a ton is not F1, it's F2, and F2 will bring you your movie glass up directly to the map. We talked about this a little bit earlier. Um, but this will, yeah, this will take you actually to the star map that's in game. Uh, that's going to be reworked hopefully here this year. And you can plot all your different points and stuff. And we're going to get more into how to use the map and plotting waypoints when we do the flight section of this video. And thus, that section of the video, I'm going over ships so long. And that is section seven. Okay, so the next button on the Moby Glass is the Moby Trader, M O Trader. And what this does is it actually lets you send personal transactions of money or merits 
to anybody, anywhere, anytime. So you have to click begin. You could work off of your friends list or if you have someone in your party. So like I see Java Sparky here. Um, I have 120,000 credits. Let's say I wanted to send him 10 credits. Well, guess what? You have to pay tax. So it's actually going to cost me 11 credits to send him 10. Uh, the more you pay, the more it's going to cost, right? So if I want to send him 100,000 credits, well, it's going to cost me 100,500 because I got to pay taxes on it. Now, we haven't talked a lot about uh, prison or anything like that. Oh, did they They took the merits away. We used to be able to get merits in prison and then used to be able to trade them to people so they could get out earlier. But they added in some some missions in prison to, to help you work your balance off faster. So I guess that is new. I I don't go to prison a lot. Um, <laughs> I, tr I try my best not to get there. And so I don't deal with merits a lot. But uh, there you go. That is the Moby Trader app. The next app in there is the Contracts Manager. You will be here a lot. <laughs> a lot. Um in the contracts manager and, and we're going to actually take some of these when we get down to section eight, which is missions. Um, it's going to, it's basically all the stuff under the general tab here is contracts that people are looking for the, uh, to hire you to do like under delivery, the Ling family is seeking new contractors. This will start the, I don't want to say a quest line, but it'll, it'll start a reputation line, which we'll get to at the end under the Delphi tab. Um, where you could be your this FedEx or UPS delivery person, or or you could work for Kovalex. But in this case, you're working for Ling Family Hauling, which as you do missions for them, they will become eventually more lucrative and you will gain reputation with them. The more reputation, the more lucrative missions they'll give you. And there's some other ones for people looking for packages and things like that. This happens to be tied directly to the Crusader system. Most of these missions are tied to Crusader or to the system that you're in. Then there's search missions looking for uh, this one's looking for Zeta Prolonide. There is uh, maintenance missions. These are the very cheapest. And it's like uh, it's not necessarily illegal, but they're trying to basically get rid of toxic or bio waste. And they want you to take it out into space and dump it. It doesn't pay well, but it is a quick way to earn three grand. So if you're really down on your luck, you can just take a couple of these missions and get up enough money to do something else, hopefully. There are bounty hunter missions. Uh, this character I haven't been bounty hunting with, so you have to actually certify yourself. You have to get certified um, uh, to do very low-risk target missions, and then eventually you'll you'll get better and better, and you'll get more missions and more missions, and then you'll get, you'll get special perks with the higher your reputation goes. And then there's mercenary missions. Now, keep in mind, anything under the general tab is legal. Nothing is illegal under the general tab. Um, these are all just basic mercenary missions, like removing some mining claim jumpers. You're going against bad guys, basically. People with crime stats, things like that. There's FPS missions over here. The one caveat under mercenary is a call to arms. You do not have to take this, but... If you kill anybody and you have this mission going, um, probably untracked, you will get money if they have a crime stat. This could be a, a player in real life or it could be an NPC. If it is a player in real life and you kill them in PvP and they have a crime stat and you don't and you have call to arms activated, they will go to prison. If you don't have a call to arms activated, they will go to Grim Hex. Or, or I'm sorry. Well, they used to go to Grim Hex. They will go to wherever their respawn location was the last time they set it. Hopefully, if they were smart and they had a big crime set, they set it at Grim Hex. But this is kind of how that works. I believe that's still how it works. Um, if it doesn't work, please correct me in the comments below if it works differently. Um, but the higher the crime stat, the higher the reward. So crime stat five, you get an extra bonus of a thousand UBC and it's a bonus, right? So if you have a bounty hunter mission to kill a target and they have a crime stat, it's an extra bonus on top of that. And you could get reputation bonuses as well. So be aware to, to, uh, to accept a mission, like a call to arms, you click on mercenary, a call to arms, and you click on accept offer in the lower right. And it's going to take you to the accepted tab. Now, right now, I have a little pin in the call to arms mission, and that means it's being tracked. 
Well, this mission doesn't have anything to specifically track. So you're going to want to hit untrack. When I untrack it, that means it's it's always passively working. It's just, the, you know, there's nothing in there to actually track. If I was to take a different mission, then I could track that and still have call to arms on at the same time. If you do want to abandon a mission or something like that under the accepted tag, you would click the mission and then you would click abandon. Sometimes it has to be done. Now let's go to the personal tab. I will tell you that most, not all, but most of the missions under the personal tab right now are illegal. So make sure you read them <laughs> before you take them. This is, I mean, this one's shady already. Property reclamation, nine grand. You have 24 minutes to accept the contract from question marks. And it talks about a gang called the Dusters. They have this chlorine shipment. They need you to pick it up. And so probably illegal, probably contraband goods, something like that. There's supply re up here. Oh, due to an unfortunate accident, sender is not found for this. Um, so you could probably bet this one's probably drugs, right? It even says Bountiful Harvest on Daymar to the drug lab on Yella. So uh, under maintenance, some of these are they're they're pretty lucrative, and you could probably get away with a lot of them without catching a crime stat. Um, you got to make sure you're not scanned and things like that. Under mercenary, this is killing people, right? So this is from Vaughn um, claiming a stake from the Duster. So if you are in monitored space, which right now I'm in Grimhex, I am not. But if you're out there and there, you're actually in monitored space, which means on the top right of the screen, uh, you see a, like it looks like a little Wi-Fi symbol. That means you're in monitored space. If you kill someone in monitored space and they don't have a crime stat, you're going to get a crime stat. That That is a crime. That's a homicide. Um, the little bullet with the, the circle and slash through it means you're in an armistice zone and you're not supposed to be able to shoot anybody in an armistice zone. Sometimes that doesn't work. Um, under the investigation tab, this one PI wanted is actually a legal mission. It's fine. Um, I do this mission all the time. It's a quick eight grand. I know the mission inside of that. I don't, you know, but it's a fun one to do. And you're basically going around this abandoned, uh, post office and looking for evidence of this, of this lady's husband who got framed. So that's, this one is actually legit. So you gotta be careful in the personal side. We already went through accepted and history. Obviously, if you have a history of doing contracts, that's where that shows up under history, uh, whether you uh, succeeded or failed. Um, and then beacons. So beacons are, they're a little different. A beacon is where you can create basically a marker or a job for somebody in the verse that's in your server with you. And they can see it and they can choose to accept it. So, for instance, uh, you hit this at the top right. It says create beacon. I click that button and I can choose the beacon type I want. It's basically creating a contract. There are three types, escort, medical assistance and personal transport. So let's see. I, let's say I want to uh, my ship is out there somewhere and it has a bunch of gear on it. Well, I need personal transport and my destination. So, you know, if your ship's usually out there. Um, it, it may show up, uh, and, but let's say it's over near our court mining area zero four five. Well, I could choose that the reputation right now for these. Um, I don't, it's up here on the top, right? Contract ratings. I don't know if that stays persistent. Uh, I don't think anybody really looks for that, but you could say, Hey, I want a guy who has five star rating. Uh, and then you can enter a value of money. You could put one, you could put a million. Obviously, the more you put in there, the more people are, are going to take. And then the, the deal is they're not supposed to get paid until they take you to that area. Under escorts, um, it's just like it says. They're, they're, going to, uh, they're going to basically escort you. Under medical assistance, if you need medical assistance uh, or you need an escort, they will come to you. They will basically get a marker for you. I believe that's the way it works. Uh, definitely it works like that for medical assistance. And let's say, hey, I need someone to, to help me. 
and you're going to put in a value of say, uh, you know, 10,000, 5,000, 25,000, uh, for someone to come and save you before you die. So that is how, uh, that all works under the contracts tab. The next tab is the vehicle and maintenance services tab or, or application, I should say. And this shows up, uh, and we'll, we'll talk about this more when we get into flying. This shows up when when you are landed at some place and you need to either repair, restock, or, re or refuel. There's two different types of refueling, hydrogen and quantum. Quantum fuel is, is the near, uh, not even near, it's the fractional light speed that we travel around the systems in. We use quantum fuel, uh, which uses a mineral called uh, quantanium, which you can actually mine, refine, and sell. Um, refueling uh, for hydrogen is just kind of how you get around in the system, how you're taking off in the atmosphere and things like that. There are two different fuel tanks on every single ship. Uh, the restock side, that's things like bullets, missiles, uh, chaff and flare, which, are, which in this game are called noise and decoy. Um, and anything other, uh, any other consumables like that, they do not restock mining consumables, which we'll get into that in the mining section under professions. And lastly, repair. If your ship gets damaged while you're out there flying, whether it's your fault, you ran into something or you got shot at and it did some damage, you have an engine out, something like that. And they have repair facilities where you're at. You can actually pay to get your ship fully repaired back to brand new. And, and they wash it while you're at it. And that's how that works. So when you do need it, it they, they show up as white and you'll be able to click on it. It'll tell you how much it is. You'll be able to click on it, click on the next one, click refuel, refuel. And then they'll have a little tick mark in there and then you can click confirm and it'll, it'll take the money out of your account, pay for it. And hopefully those services are rendered. Sometimes there are bugs guys and they are not rendered. Um, there's a lot of times over at Outpost right now in this patch when you land on a moon or something and you don't even have these services available. If they're red, you can't do anything. If they're white, then you can try to do at least something. Okay, the next application is the journal. This is, you know, in every online role-playing game and, and just role-playing games in general, you have a journal. So when you go to different areas like Crusader, Microtech, Art Corp., uh, we should have uh, Lorville Hurston Dynamics down here. It kind of tells you wh what's up with Hurston and uh, what a felony is there, what a misdemeanor is there, the, the prices of the misdemeanors where you could pay off at those terminals, um, prohibited goods, things like that. Um, and the systems are mostly the same, but some of them do have different things. Um Tells you how regeneration works, better nutrition, because you have to eat to live and drink to live sometimes. Uh, Crusader security, quantum navigation, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You can read those on your own. The only one that really changes over time, and you probably see a little alert come up on my screen all the time, is the commodity price alerts. Right now, we don't have a great economical system. It is being worked on. It's called quantum, not to be confused with quantum travel. But the quantum system will basically set the economy in the game with supply and demand. And it does a whole lot more than that. But one of the basic things it does is set supply and demand. But right now, if you're starting out and you're a beginning trader or, or cargo hauler and, you know, you're, I don't know, let's say you're over at Lorville. Um, well, Lorville is under stock on processed food, right? So if you go to Galette Family Farms, which I believe is in the Hurston system, they're overstocked on it. So you can buy processed food cheaper at $1.20. You could sell it at Lorville, which is understocked, so they'll, they'll pay more for it. They'll pay a buck fifty. So you're making $0.30 cents, um, per standard cargo unit, um, which, which is not a lot. <laughs> but you can see how that works. Supply and demand, buy low, sell high. All right, so let's talk about the very last app in the Moby Glass. And you guys have probably just noticed that I have switched characters um, because my alternate account, I haven't really done anything with her. So sh she doesn't have any type of reputation. Um, but my main guy, um, I do have a little bit of reputation. 
So we're going to click on this last app called the Delphi app. And you can see under the organizations section here, I have uh, Hurston Security, Blackjack Security, Bounty Hunter Guild, Crusader Security, Microtech, blah, 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 blah. Um, Redwind Line Hall is uh, basically cargo missions, a unified distribution management, uh, same thing. Kovalex, same thing. Uh, the uh, I haven't really played a lot of, of these, uh, of, of some of the missions I've done. I do mostly dogfighting with this character. Um, so under Bounty Hunters Guild, um, you can see that I started out at level zero. Um, I went up to level one as a probationary guild member, junior guild member. And now I'm a guild member. And then it says there's an advanced license, very high risk target available. Um, if I wanted to try that out, I would go click on the contracts manager. Then I would go over to Bounty Hunter. And then under Bounty Hunter, um, doesn't even give me, it doesn't give me the mission to upgrade. So I probably would have to do like a high risk target mission. And then it would say, hey, uh, you want to try very high risk target missions? And it would give me a chance to, to go earn that. Um, but yeah, so that's this. This actually shows you a little bit more um, from the bounty hunter side as well. Once you progress up in reputation, you, you'll have more missions out there. Um, we can see an ECN alert just came in. Uh, ECN alert is like an emergency contact network or something like that. And I know this 10,000 Alpha UEC mission is for uh, four or five constellations that are attacking like a freelancer or something. And you have to go blow them up. It's actually not a lot of money for the size of shields on that ship. But we can see here under Bounty Hunter how reputation has affected things. So if we go back to the reputation side, um, at Hurston, um, we can see for bounty hunting, I am an associate tracker. That is for flying around and bounty hunting. For Hurston security, which is the FPS missions, I'm just a security trainee. Uh, Blackjack Security, I haven't even done an FPS mission for them. Uh, same with Crusader. Microtech, I have. I, I think we failed that one on a stream or something. Um, there you go. So that is the organization side of the Delphi uh, Reputation Manager. You can also click on uh, Contacts here. And I don't have any contacts in here. Contacts show up when you take a mission from an actual NPC that speaks to you. Um, Hurston, uh, Lorville has one, um, uh, and the, that's like a bounty hunting, um, in space battle type, type of missions where you have to kill this. It's like a quest line of killing people and you'll get your, your contact for that. I don't really want to give away too much. Um, you'll see notices pop up from time to time. Like, Hey, um, Clovis Darnielli wants to talk to you or something like that over at Grim Hacks when you're in the Crusader system. Well, that's one of the guys that actually talks to you and asks you to run drugs for him. And then you'll have reputation with him. And as you get more reputation, you'll unlock the, the better, more lucrative or next in line missions. Uh, back to organizations. Let's say we want to look at the Bounty Hunters Guild. Well, from there, we can click uh, instead of career, we can click on dossier. <laughs> And this will give us a dossier of the Bounty Hunters Guild as a whole, uh, headquartered in New York uh, when it was founded, who leads it, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Same thing with Hurston Security. Um, Kayla Hurston actually is the Inspector General of Hurston Security. Uh, and then we have Cru Crusader and uh, Microtech and all, all the other groups here. Um, so it'll give you a little bit of history and a little bit of lore if you want that. And then you can make some of them your favorites, too. So um, I actually tend to fight in security quite a bit so I could make Crusader my favorite. You see Hurston and Crusader both have stars up there, so they'll show up at the top of the list. Later on, when this game is much closer to release and, and after beta comes out and there's a, just a ton of content flooding in and missions and things like that, the favorite system in the search system, the search bar up here will be huge. Uh, if I wanted to search just for blackjack security, then I could just type that in. Um, so having that in here now, it, it's it's nice. I like it. So that ends the tour of the Moby Glass. Um, I think it took about half an hour here. 
Uh, the next section we're going to get into is actually pretty thorough, and it's all about gear. Um, the types of gear, um, the basics on where to buy it, uh, stores and things like that. Um, and so let's hop into that right now. Hey, everybody, I hope you enjoyed uh, the section on starting the game and uh, the Moby Glass. The next video, which should come out the following day after this video is released. Hopefully there's links uh, already in YouTube for it. There should be. Uh, but the next video is going to be section five and it's all by itself. It is on gear and how gear, uh, how you do different things about gear in the game. Um and especially how to use the new inventory system. So uh, without further ado, uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.